I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. So if you're all ready, here we go with the very first of these. Bad ways to start a party political broadcast. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> My fellow paedophiles... <laughs> Hang on, I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> Good moment! <laughs> As you know, the football is on the other channel. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to say that it is mostly the blacks. <laughs> I'm John Prescott. Now, I expect you're wondering why I'm making... <laughs> I think our policies are best expressed... in song! <laughs> During the next three and a half hours... <laughs> now, look, we all know we're not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Death to the West. <laughs> Let me tell you what the voices in my head are telling me. <laughs> OK, our next topic is... Things you'd never hear a French person say. Of course, it looked hopeless, but we kept fighting. <laughs> I'd like a bottle of Burgundy and a Dairy Lee Dunker, please. <laughs> You're English. How nice to meet you. <laughs> J'aime beaucoup, Monsieur Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> I've just bought a wonderful little holiday home in the south of Birmingham. <laughs> My favourite road? Well, that's got to be the A303. <laughs> uh, at night, in many ways, it's quicker than the M4 and you get to go past Stonehenge. If you're going London to the West Country, it's A303 for me every time. <laughs> what a road. What a road. <laughs> and we threw that part of the animal away. OK, our next topic is what the voices in Tony Blair's head are saying. You will obey! <laughs> you will obey! Keep smiling, have Gordon killed. Keep smiling, <laughs> have Gordon killed. <laughs> Cherie, will you shut the f*** up? <laughs> Look there, Cherie. That reminds me, I must post a letter. <laughs> <laughs> I like big bucks and I cannot laugh. <laughs> I wonder what John Prescott looks like in hot pants. <laughs> <laughs> Mustn't get a stiffy. <laughs> Damn it, got a stiffy. <laughs> Go on, lie. You got away with it last time. <laughs> Things a new pope shouldn't say in his first public speech. <laughs> YMCA. <laughs> there you go. I've dreamed of this moment ever since I was a little girl. <laughs> What a f***ing <laughs> view. <laughs> I'd like to thank my wife. <laughs> I only wish that Hitler could have been alive to see this moment. <laughs> I'm a celibate. Get me out of here. <laughs> Very good. Well done. OK, next topic. Oh, more. Oh, oh, you're more oh, the Pope. Yeah, Sorry, OK, yeah. Grant, OK. Still on the Pope. <laughs> <Right. Hello. laughs> 
I can't think of a finer way to spend the last six months of my life. <laughs> Things a Wimbledon commentator would never say. 40, 37. <laughs> Well, there is Sharapova, and I'm sure, like me, you long to have those long, moist Russian legs wrapped around your face. <laughs> is it just me, or are they just hitting it back and forth? <laughs> <laughs> How wonderful to see an old British final. <laughs> well, there's a ball boy needs taming. <laughs> Advantage, Whittacombe. <laughs> and as they come to the first, it's Spanish steps over safely. <laughs> <followed by Red. laughs> All this grunting is giving me the horn. <laughs> In the women's game, why does the pretty one always lose to the moose? <laughs> Now, that one must be a man. <laughs> Next topic, please. TV shows that never made it to air. Hi, I'm Bill Oddie, and this is Badger Cull Live. <laughs> Complicated financial fraud, she wrote. <laughs> Terrorists say the funniest things. <laughs> yes, it's who wants to be a milliner. <laughs> Police, camera, paperwork. <laughs> Let's see if you can guess who it is in Lloyd Grossman's Through the Arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrity Love Island. Oh, no, Christ, that really happened. <laughs> Welcome to the first edition of I'm a Suicide Bomber, Get Me In There. <laughs> You've been shot. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next topic is... Unlikely lines for the Queen to include in her annual message. Some of my best friends are black. <laughs> been involved in an accident that wasn't your fault. <laughs> Send a rebate or the corgi gets it. <laughs> Ashton Schneeselhans mein go up in Fjord. <laughs> Look, we don't cost you 99p each. We don't cost you 79p each. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm a fool to myself, but we cost you 61 p each, <laughs> and for that I'll throw in Princess Michael of Kent. You can't say fairer than that. <laughs> the Queen is brought to you by Power Jam. <laughs> so there were these two nuns in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Charles. You'll have to prize my crown out of my cold, dead hand. <laughs> I'm a killer. Queen! <laughs> Bad things to say on stage at Live Aid. They've put a lovely spread on backstage. <laughs> Rock star caviar. <laughs> Let's not cancel debt. Let's consolidate it into one <laughs> manageable <laughs> I'm Michael Howard, and this is my rap for Africa. <laughs> Whinging Africans, eh? <laughs> Hands up who finds fair trade bananas a little dear. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people complain that there are no ethnic minorities at this gig, but no, here they are, the black and white minstrel show. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is what the voices in Prince Charles's head are saying. Charles, this is the plants. You've betrayed us again. 
We're going to kill your new wife too. <laughs> If I really am the father, why is he so stupid? <laughs> How much would it cost to turn Windsor Castle bouncy? <laughs> Kill a swan, they can't touch you for it. <laughs> Nazi uniform. No, that was funny. <laughs> So what if she's your mother? Just press the pillow over her face and count to a hundred. <laughs> Very good. The next topic is inappropriate things to say on winning Wimbledon. Mr. Blair, <laughs> this is for Iraq. <laughs> Three sets, no smell. <laughs> That's palm olive. <laughs> Thanks very much, but uh, I've actually come here to talk to you about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that Nandalone's great stuff, isn't it? <laughs> this is fantastic. In, in some way, it compensates for my lost childhood, my dysfunctional family, and the fact I'm so stressed I haven't had a period for seven years. <laughs> To be honest, I only won because I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delighted to have won uh, and put all the drug rumours behind me and uh, I'd just like to thank my husband for sticking with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been everything, it's been amazing. Apart from the crowd, who are a bunch of assholes, <laughs> and I wish they'd stop trying to share in what is essentially my triumph. <laughs> I just got a blowjob in the dressing room from a womble. <laughs> <laughs> Just hanger lines from a political soap opera. I'm John F. Kennedy. I've been in the shower. Did I miss anything? <laughs> hey, Connelisa. I think I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> the irony won't be lost on you here, President Schwarzenegger. I'm from the future, and I'm here to stop you from destroying the world. <laughs> we've had drunkards, we've had rent boys. What could be worse? What have you done? Shagged a goat addicted to heroin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I missed your vote on sustainable agriculture. I'm afraid I was busy sleeping with your wife. <laughs> Are you trying to seduce me, Lady Thatcher? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you say, George? Just you and me and Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> The next topic is things George Galloway would never say. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I can't wear that. That looks stupid. <laughs> I'm very famous in the Muslim world for being an arse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, enough about me. How was your day? <laughs> Oh, thank you very much indeed, Saddam. Would you like a receipt? <laughs> Next topic, please. Words you'd never hear from a newsreader. Welcome to Channel 5 News, thickos. Yeah. <laughs> Oi, do you want to buy some speakers? <laughs> <laughs> Too revolting to describe. But let's have a go anyway. <laughs> Basically... <laughs> the two youths convicted this morning got what they f***ing deserved. <laughs> OK, they may have acquitted him, but he certainly looked like a paedophile. <laughs> 
You've been watching Sky News. To be honest, I'd double-check everything you've just heard. <laughs> <laughs> Sir uh, Gary Glitter received his honour at the palace this morning. <laughs> Welcome to ITV News on ice. <laughs> Must be unlikely. <laughs> the next report may contain images that could give you the horn. <laughs> In this next report, Jerry Adams is voiced by an actor, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> I'll tell you about the priest process, mother <laughs> Bad things to say at Prime Minister's question time. <clears throat> Prime Minister, could you look interested while I bring up some boring shit about my constituency? <laughs> <laughs> Is this going to take long? Cos I've got an appointment with a rent boy in half an hour. <laughs> Can I ask the Prime Minister? Are you paying too much for car insurance? <laughs> <clears throat> we've got one, we've got two, we've got two more poofs than you! <laughs> uh, could, could I ask the Prime Minister, when are you going to retire, you bastard? <laughs> Prime Minister, my first is in pee, but not in canoe. <laughs> <laughs> what am I? <laughs> OK, next topic is the very worst person to be president of the US. <laughs> I am President Jimmy, and the band was... <laughs> sure, what day, what day? <laughs> Scott, and this is Silly Bang. <laughs> this round is much easier if you can do impressions. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, dear, it's a commercial. <laughs> Next topic is unlikely things to hear at the Oscars. And the award goes to Ross Kemp. <laughs> <laughs> The dress. Oh, Primark. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, King Kong can't be with us tonight, but... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't even in that one. <laughs> Thank you. This will be on eBay tomorrow morning. <laughs> they said they couldn't make the Sally Gunnell story. But here we are! <laughs> I'd like to thank the person who cast me as a blind, autistic, Parkinson's disease-ridden mute for, <laughs> for making this award almost inevitable. <laughs> for best film in a foreign language, Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> Death to the West! <laughs> As a gay cowboy, I think I know where I'll be putting this little fella. <laughs> Unlikely things for a Winter Olympics commentator to say. Points off the Danish team for exploding. <laughs> and he's fallen over! I love it when they do that! That's the best bit! <laughs> And now, the four words that no ice dancer ever wants to hear. Release the polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> of course, bribery no longer exists in the Olympic movement. Welcome to the Winter Games, here in Basingstoke. <laughs> <laughs> the upturned bobsleigh providing a fitting coffin. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever stared at snow so long it turns to blood? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, the band must just be fed up with playing the British national anthem. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... What you don't want to hear in an NHS hospital. 
can you go for a shit so this surgeon can get his car keys back? <laughs> <laughs> There's been the most hilarious misunderstanding during your vasectomy. <laughs> MRSA, yeah, I think they tried to give me a credit card. <laughs> the face transplant's gone well. I think you look better as a black man. <laughs> I've come to take your blood sample. <laughs> Now, you're sure you had legs when you came in? <laughs> the next topic is... Commercials that never made it to air. Fed up with an untidy toolbox? Buy the Abu Hamza multi-tool. <laughs> Start the day with a protein boost with Kellogg's Pork Flakes. <laughs> Come home to a real fire. Visit the Danish Embassy. <laughs> <laughs> My bank became a wine bar. To be honest, I quite like it. <laughs> <laughs> the Indonesian children who made these trainers know that if they miss a single stitch, their family will be beaten with sticks. That's <laughs> how we can guarantee you quality. <laughs> Use Vanish, like me, Saul Campbell. <laughs> Accident at work? Look where you're going, you dozy bastard. <laughs> Run out of loo roll? Why not use this fluffy dog? <laughs> Dry skin, itchy, flaking scalp. You disgust me. <laughs> What you don't want to hear a Prime Minister say. Gordon, I've discovered how to make myself immortal. <laughs> uh, well, who'd have thought it? <laughs> Unfortunately, we have received no such undertaking. <laughs> and we are now at war with Wales. <laughs> Celeb Big Brother, and now this! <laughs> Get me an 18 inch knife and a hand grenade. I'm sorting this Iraq shit out. <laughs> so, there were these two Muslims who walked into a bar. <laughs> oh, Mr. President, you're hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to play you a little song I've written. <laughs> Members of the House, the band was. <laughs> so what it? What it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the next topic is in the week in which Tony Blair's plane was forced to land due to engine trouble, unsettling things to hear from the cockpit of a plane. Thank God we're flying. I'm too pissed to drive. <laughs> We're about to experience a little bit of turbulence and then a lot of falling. <laughs> <laughs> this is the captain speaking. We're out at the moment. Please leave a message after the <laughs> Don't uh, panic. Just think of it as landing more vertically than normal. <laughs> Help me with my seatbelt, Abu. I can't do it with this damn hook. <laughs> <clears throat> OK, Captain Thomas, uh, when I tap the windscreen, I want you to stop. <laughs> if you look out over the right wing, you'll see the burning remains of the left wing. <laughs> <laughs> My next topic is bad Valentine cards to receive. I want to bonk you senseless tonight. Lots of love, your cellmate. <laughs> <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue, 
I have chlamydia, and now so do you. <laughs> I can't wait to feel your flesh next to mine again. Love, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> I will be as faithful to you as any dog and come when you whistle. <laughs> Dear heart, are you paying too much for your car? <laughs> I love you. Please send this letter on to ten other people. <laughs> What not to say on receiving a Winter Olympics medal? I hate my national anthem. Could you play Love on the Rocks? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I is it milk or dark chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, blood, have you got one with like, uh, like some, a ganja leaf or something like that on it? Like, <laughs> maybe an AK 47. <laughs> This is great. I didn't even realise it was a sport. <laughs> Gold for Switzerland. I'll put it with the rest of the Nazi stuff. <laughs> is it me or is it bloody cold here? Could you just hang the medal off my neck brace? <laughs> uh, I've chosen to replace God Save the Queen with Hey You, the Rock Steady Crew. Please, all rise. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mum, my dad, but mostly the man who came down in the gritting lorry after I'd finished my run. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mother for providing my urine sample. <laughs> I reckon I could have got the gold if my suit wasn't stuck halfway up the crack of my ass. <laughs> The gold for women's curling. This will take pride of place in the office that I clean. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> wow, this is almost like winning a real medal. <laughs> There are so many people to thank. I guess, really, chief amongst them must be gravity. Gravity, without you, I would just be another skier floating in the clouds. This is for you, Big G. For you! Sorry about the yellow stain at the top of the ski jump. <laughs> uh, and the brown one. I'm so proud I feel my heart could burst. And on my steroids, that's not supposed to happen for weeks. <laughs> Thanks for the medal. The band was... <laughs> so was it? Was it? <laughs> this makes up for every day of my lost childhood. <laughs> and that's why we call him Four Man Bob. <laughs> <laughs> With you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give this piece of shit up to live somewhere sunny. Uh. <laughs> if you got one in gold, silver gives me a rash. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Improbable things for Osama bin Laden to say in his tapes. This is ridiculous. It must be your turn to hide. <laughs> <laughs> The sooner you finish building that stadium, the sooner I can fly a plane into it. <laughs> what do you think? Lose the beard? <laughs> anyway, that's enough talk from me. It's five to six and it's time for Al-Qaeda's non-stop music marathon. Less talk, <laughs> more music, less talk, more music. Here's David Bowie with China Girl. <laughs> Stop! You're recording over my wedding video! <laughs> George, what's holding up my visa application? <laughs> Look, come on, we've all had a drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jade, that's beautiful. Do it again. <laughs> Osama bin Laden, News at 10, the Pentagon. <laughs> oh, I could kill a bacon sandwich. <laughs> 
I've just seen the funniest cartoon. <laughs> get broke back mountain out of blockbusters again this week. <laughs> Do you think this cave makes me look a bit gay? <laughs> <laughs> so, who could live in a cave like this? <laughs> I'd like to recommend the new Sarah Waters novel published by Virago Press <laughs> at 799. It's a Barnstorming historical page turner of a novel, <laughs> which I couldn't put down. Uh uh, no way. I've not even started this. this what, a shame. what a shame, therefore, that waters will burn in the fires of eternal hell as a Western infidel whore. That said, it does remain my Al Qaeda book of the week. <laughs> Death to the West! <laughs> Hello, Google Maps! <laughs> Well, here in Bracknell... <laughs> I'm Osama Bin Laden, and this is Silit Bang! <laughs> My co-host this week is Vernon Kay. <laughs> so, I've only just heard it. You get a yak and some peanuts, <laughs> it'll go! I'm coming out! <laughs> Western media is decadent. Look at the way they steal old rounds from whose line is it anyway? <laughs> they won't show this bit, the decadent bastards. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Osama's Bloopers. <laughs> I get so fucking tired of people trying to irritate my accent. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is unlikely things for a TV announcer to say. For those of you of a nervous disposition, <laughs> for those of you of a nervous disposition, you may be disturbed to know that your television is off, and I'm speaking to you from inside your own head. <laughs> um, I'm afraid the next programme contains some very strong language, so if you don't like that, fuck off to bed. <laughs> Next on Channel 4, wizened, sanctimonious old jobby sniffer Gillian McKeith gets a slap from a fat housewife. <laughs> Next up, it's the news with Michael Burke, whose wife I've shagged. <laughs> Next on BBC, Bargain Hunt. Viewers may find some images distressing. <laughs> Well, that's it. Don't forget that BBC 24 goes through the night, as do I. <laughs> <laughs> and next on Channel 5, a sensitive documentary um, entitled The Boy Who Looked Like a Baboon's Arse. <laughs> Digital viewers, press the red button now. Analog viewers, you're stuck with the Friday Night Project. <laughs> <laughs> you may be interested to know I am completely naked and playing with myself. <laughs> we apologise for the absence of property programmes this evening. <laughs> you're watching GMTV. We apologise for the poor quality of Fiona Phillips. <laughs> We interrupt tonight's showing of The Sixth Sense with some breaking news. Bruce Willis is a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and next on CBeebies, that knobhead postman Pat. <laughs> if you have been affected by any of the issues raised in Balamori, <laughs> you are one sad bastard. <laughs> You're watching ITV1. Uh, why are you doing that? I've got, the, I've got the listings in front of me and we've got nothing. <laughs> nothing. Unfortunately, tonight's episode of Family Affairs has been cancelled, as it wasn't very good. <laughs> well, that was the National Lottery, which I've just won. So, fuck this job, <laughs> fuck the BBC, <laughs> and fuck the lot of you. <laughs> Of 
course, I really wanted to be a supermarket announcer, but I, I can't say the word potato. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> the next topic is... <laughs> books that wouldn't sell. <clears throat> the German translation, you are who you eat. <laughs> the Quran in Danish, a graphic novel. <laughs> The EasyJet cookbook. <laughs> what not to wear in Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> David Irving's Feel Great, Look Mad, Talk Shite. <laughs> <laughs> the Da Vinci Code explained to be bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> the illustrated Richard and Judy Karma Sutra. <laughs> <clears throat> Stephen Hawking's eye, tongue and lip workout. <laughs> Are you looking at my volcano? One man's dysfunctional love affair with Mount Vesuvius. <laughs> Russell Grant, I can make you fat. <laughs> or not, maybe. <laughs> Eats, shoots and leaves. US foreign policy in Iraq. <laughs> the John Leslie pop-up book. <laughs> Gillian McKeith's How to Live on Pulses but Seemingly Without One. <laughs> Personal hygiene for students. A scratch and sniff edition. <laughs> Zen and the art of motorway maintenance. <laughs> A hundred uses for a dead Galloway. <laughs> Israeli Army Martial Arts. Sixteen ways to kick a Palestinian woman in the back while she's running. <laughs> Why I Hate Peanuts by Neil Yak. <laughs> Gordon Brown's Extreme Sudoku. <laughs> Beckham's Thesaurus. <laughs> Paul McKenna's Think Yourself Waiter. <laughs> I agree, Neil, they're infuriating by Elaine Yak. <laughs> the Let's Diary, 2003. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is what you wouldn't want to hear John Prescott say. <clears throat> Can I try going on top for a bit? <laughs> oh, hang on, it's coming back. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was the onions. <laughs> My fellow MPs, welcome to Fight Club. <laughs> Look out, a tree's about to fall on your head. <laughs> you uh, know that pie chart, Tony? I ate it. I'm naked and I'm ready. <laughs> Tony <laughs> and Gordon. Lick my balls if you want to live. <laughs> I've got something to say, and it might take some time. <laughs> I'm sorry I don't do this much, but you look absolutely ravishing. May I buy you a lasagna? <laughs> <laughs> Why shouldn't I wear a leotard? <laughs> The thing about being trapped in a lift is that it really brings on my irritable bowel. <laughs> <coughs> well, I'm afraid Tony's feeling a bit poorly, so I'm taking over. Right! <laughs> Can I borrow your speedos? <laughs> anti disestablishment head. Anti disestablish. Anti disestablish. Fuck it. <laughs> Well, we've broken down on this lonely moor. <laughs> Have you seen Brokeback Mountain? <laughs> it's about puffs. Exam questions that were rejected. 
A lot of people say that the exams are too easy. Is the answer A, yes? <laughs> or B, David Beckham? <laughs> With illustrations, describe the Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> a virgin train is travelling at 120 miles per hour between London and Manchester. What time will it be cancelled? <laughs> All PE teachers are paedophiles. Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> If the world is heating up at two degrees per decade, what is the point of anything? <laughs> Spell Mississippi without looking at how we've spelt it in the question. <laughs> two cars are speeding. One is being driven by a black man. <laughs> Which one will be stopped? <laughs> Do you think kids spend too much time with their PlayStation? Answer, cross, triangle, <laughs> circle or square. Pick the box A, B or C to receive the grade A, B or C. <laughs> <laughs> Sex education practical. Report to me in the stationery cupboard. <laughs> If I add one eighth to one sixteenth, how stoned will I be? <laughs> Can you master this phrase? Do you want fries with that? <laughs> there you go, let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> Famous last words. Stingrays love foreplay. <laughs> I'll bet you I can jump that ticket barrier. <laughs> no, don't shoot me! It's Yoko you want! <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, the closer it gets, the more it looks like a piano. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, Zidane! <clears throat> your mum's a slag! <laughs> He's only got lipstick, Vaseline and jam. <laughs> <laughs> what trouble can he cause? <laughs> yeah, Jackie, let's go in the open-topped car. <laughs> <laughs> of course it's not a poisonous snake. What would a poisonous snake be doing on a plane? <laughs> Rejected first lines for the new Harry Potter book. Harry thought of his magical adventures very differently now that he'd been diagnosed as a schizophrenic. <laughs> Don't you realise, Ron, said Harry, with our magic powers, we simply won't need Rehypnol. <laughs> Finishing in the cafeteria, Harry and Ron turned their wands on themselves. <laughs> It's not as good as that one. <laughs> I am Lord Voldemort, and I am an alcoholic. <laughs> Grease the goat! Grease the goat! Grease the goat! <laughs> Harry stared at his own spectacles and thought, I can summon a centaur, but I can't fix my astigmatism. <laughs> <laughs> I have earned more money than the Queen. I can't be asked. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harry, said Ron. I, I thought you felt the same way. <laughs> Genital warts at Hogwarts, said Matron. What fun. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> <laughs> Harry wrapped the elastic round his arm and tapped the crook of his elbow, <laughs> trying to get his vein up. <laughs> Come on, you bastard, he said. 
Something about the spell must have gone wrong because one of Harry's testicles had turned into a scorpion. <laughs> it was October and the beginning of Harry's fifth term at Feltham Young Offenders Institute. <laughs> Show us where Dumbledore touched you, said the judge. <laughs> Show us on the doll. <laughs> the next topic is on helpful things to say in a crisis. I know, why don't we get the UN involved? <laughs> <laughs> Statistically speaking, of course, in these circumstances, most of us will die. <laughs> Kumbaya, my lord. <laughs> I think this 14th century text adequately sums up what I want to say. I know you're a hijacker, but I ordered a vegetarian meal. <laughs> I know this is probably the wrong time, but I've got an erection. <laughs> Women and children first, then I'll shag the men and the animals. <laughs> Advise things to say in court. <laughs> How could she have seen my face? I was wearing a balaclava! <laughs> <laughs> so, to summarise, there's no evidence, but he does look a bit rapey. <laughs> Your Honour, that wig looks really gay. <laughs> Your Honour, if you like, I've got the number of a really good Brazilian cleaner. <laughs> If stabbing a man makes me guilty, I'm guilty. <laughs> I would like to present my own defence through the medium of dance. <laughs> <laughs> so, if I'm found not guilty, can I keep all the stuff I nicked? <laughs> and I put it to you, my lad, that that child is sexy. <laughs> Wiggy, I've done your door! <laughs> <laughs> I was performing the Heimlich manoeuvre and it sort of turned into the wheelbarrow position. <laughs> Will this take long? <laughs> meeting a boat from Colombia at night. <laughs> there is a precedent for this. I refer your honour to episode 10 of LA Law. <laughs> And let me say this. Sentencing you will give me an overwhelming wave of sexual pleasure. <laughs> Send him down. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is... Things a sports commentator would never say. Like a lot of people watching this Olympics, I'm wondering why black people don't just take over the earth. <laughs> There's the bell, and the schoolgirls I've been spying on go back to their classrooms. <laughs> I can't be the only person to wonder what it would be like to shag this gymnast. <laughs> so here we are, from Wembley. <laughs> <laughs> so, with uh, three furlongs to go in uh, this Grand National, let's leave the leaders and go and watch the fallers being shot. <laughs> I should probably keep my voice down because this is snooker. <laughs> oh, forehand, backhand, forehand. Oh. Don't you just love it when they grunt? <laughs> <laughs> just reading through the names of this Chinese team is making me feel hungry. <laughs> And for those of you who missed them, here are next week's Italian football results. <laughs> this woman isn't just a world-class curler, she's also a model. <laughs> Commercials that never made it to air. <coughs> Links for that cheap teenage smell of desperation. <laughs> 
Because some nights are best forgotten. Rehypnol. <laughs> Injured at work? Don't drive a jet car at 300 miles an hour. The Islamic Jihad High School, because they blow up so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tony the Tiger. Siegfried and Roy taste great! <laughs> For effective ethnic cleansing, use Milosevic. <laughs> the post office. We were always full of absolute freaks. <laughs> we laundered this half of the money with the Mafia and this half with the more violent Chinese triads. <laughs> L'Oreal! <laughs> By the year 2020, we shall rule the Earth. Tesco, every little helps. <laughs> Losing a hair, tiny cock, you need a Porsche. <laughs> Clear all your debts with one easy payment. Buy a shotgun and blow your head off. <laughs> Take two bottles into the shower. Yes, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> that's it on that topic. <laughs> Our next topic is inappropriate acts for the Royal Variety performance. <laughs> Let's play Who's Harry's Dad? <laughs> Stephen Hawking unplugged. <laughs> Your Royal Highnesses, Lords, ladies and gentlemen, I give you synchronised dogging. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the marching band of the Mujah Hadeen! <laughs> As a treat for the Duke of Edinburgh, the black and white minstrels sing the speeches of Hitler. <laughs> The George Michael motorcycling display team! <laughs> Lines that you'd never hear in a Bond film. Ingenious Q. It's a bomb, but it's also a rucksack. <laughs> <laughs> James, what a wonderful present. Chlamydia. <laughs> My name is Bond. Mohammed Bond. <laughs> Everything's ready for your mission, Bond. All you need to do is fill in this health and safety risk assessment. <laughs> Mr. Bond, have you ever kissed a man? <laughs> You're very good at poker, but let's see how you do on the fruit machines. <laughs> your new car, Bond? A Ford Focus. <laughs> I'll have an egg roll. Scrambled, not boiled. <laughs> Let me get this straight. There's an evil tyrant at the top of a mountain surrounded totally by armed guards. Do you know, I don't fancy it. <laughs> it's not just a baseball bat, Bond. It's a baseball bat with a nail through it. <laughs> Oh, James, is it meant to be this soft? <laughs> We're getting away. We'll get after them in this pedalo. <laughs> We'd better slow down. There are speed cameras. <laughs> I hope you're not going to be one of those Russian agents whose name is just a cheap sexual pun, Miss Suck Me Off. <laughs> TV shows that never made it to air. The boy whose arms and arse and head fell off. <laughs> he robs from the rich and the poor. It's Robin Hoodie. 
And now the magic of Britain's parks at night as Bill Oddy presents Gay Watch. <laughs> On BBC Two, Jack Straw's What Not to Wear. <laughs> I'm Wayne Rooney, and welcome to Granny's Do the Filthiest Things. <laughs> welcome to Blind Date with me, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> and now, BBC One, it's the senile dementia show. Where do you think you are? <laughs> Week on Who Do You Think You Are? Prince Harry traces his family tree with some surprising results. <laughs> Bad things to say when leading troops into battle. Cry God for Harry, England, and St. George. Let <laughs> us march to the music of Shawaddy Waddy. <laughs> Soon you'll be at home with your families in a jar on the mantelpiece. <laughs> Have you been injured at work? <laughs> right, lads, I might... Ah, oh, pins and needles. <laughs> General Churchill will be leading the troops in on this one, isn't that right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Our best hope is that the enemy kills so many of us, they become slightly depressed. <laughs> Hello, I'm George Bush. <laughs> this next mission will be led by Michael Moore, seeing as he knows so fucking much. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on Blue Peter. <laughs> Today, we'll show you how to make an ashtray using the shell of a dead tortoise. <laughs> and welcome back, John Leslie! <laughs> Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a gimp? <laughs> <laughs> When we say the vandals have killed the goldfish, we mean they've shat in the pond. <laughs> and all we'll need to make this is a Bunsen burner, a spoon, some fresh cocaine and a pie. <laughs> so, in a moment, Connie will be teaching you how to clone your parents' credit cards. <laughs> With a couple of batteries and a toilet roll holder, you can make a fantastic Mother's Day vibrator. <laughs> In the week in which the government called for stricter driving tests, things you wouldn't hear on a driving test. When I slap the dashboard with my forehead, I'd like you to crawl out of the wreckage and fetch help. <laughs> <laughs> OK, when I give you the signal, I want you to wind the window down and call the cyclist a wanker. <laughs> When I say go, foot down, straight through the jewellers, get where you can. <laughs> you made one mistake, sir. A pine air freshener doesn't cover up the smell of a dead hitchhiker. <laughs> well, if she doesn't get up, you've definitely failed. <laughs> well, at least we know the airbags work. <laughs> uh, when there's nobody else on a motorway, you should always drive in the middle lane, just in case you fall asleep, you've got a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> if I fail, can I still keep driving my taxi? <laughs> Me, in a car. Can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> on my signal, I'd like you to mount the pavement and kill my ex-wife. <laughs> Our next topic is what the Queen didn't say in her Christmas message. <laughs> yum yum! I've just eaten a swan. <laughs> and now for an impression. 
They call me Mr. Bombastic. <laughs> Kiss me on the butt because I'm Mr. Rose, Rose, romantic. Are you paying too much for your car insurance? <laughs> it's been good to spend some time with my family and Harry. <laughs> as usual, after this, we'll be watching The Great Escape, and as usual, we'll be supporting the Germans. <laughs> This year, I am in an unusual location. <laughs> I'm in a cave with Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anyone, but I'm actually an elf. <laughs> I've had a few medical problems this year. <laughs> I'm now so old that my pussy <laughs> is haunted. <laughs> Likely lines to find in the Bible. <laughs> he's not the Messiah, he's a very naughty boy. <laughs> and God said, Let there be light. Sponsored by Power Jet. <laughs> a man who lies with another man should be stoned. It helps, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> and God said, right, that's the 14 commandments. Now, will you remember all those? <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> Table for 12, Jesus. I, I can do two sixes at 8.30. <laughs> and on the eighth day, God created a magic talking leopard and forgot all about us. <laughs> And Mary said God had given her a child, so Joseph went and joined Fathers for Justice. <laughs> and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, although Thames Water still had a hosepipe ban. <laughs> St Paul's third epistle to the Corinthians. Dear Corinthians, I've written to you twice now. No reply. <laughs> I don't know how you do things in Corinth, but where I'm from, that's a bit rude. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... In the week in which the government discussed raising the school leaving age, bad things for a teacher to say. Fight! 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 <laughs> fight! Fight! You know the rules, Thomas. If you forget your PE kit, I take the lesson in my pants. <laughs> I'm a gun runner, robber and murderer, but the Home Office think I'm clean. <laughs> Are you chewing, boy? This is the worst blowjob I've had all day. <laughs> I don't know the answer, Watkins. I just do this job for the holidays. <laughs> it turns out you're not dyslexic, you're just really, really stupid. <laughs> I have been at this school for over 40 years. I buggered your fathers and I will bugger you. <laughs> in the week in which the Oscar nominations were revealed, rejected lines from movies. E.T. phone premium rate set. <laughs> Milk, bread, rich tea biscuits. Are you sure this is the right list, Mr Schindler? <laughs> there are 50,000 Zulu outside. Now tell Jay to get back inside and keep her <laughs> bloody mouth shut. <laughs> this T-1000 cybernetic organism has encountered a problem and needs to close. Do you wish to send an error report? <laughs> My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, but on weekends, Marjorie. Ah. A census taker tried to test me once. I ate his liver 
with some fish fingers and a bottle of Jacob's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Cheltenham! <laughs> Well, there's one thing I should tell you, Mr. Darcy. I have chlamydia. <laughs> what, Rambo? You want to wait for a UN resolution? <laughs> <laughs> you were only supposed to blow the bloody doors off, Ibrahim. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. But thank you for phoning the BT helpline. <laughs> Luke Skywalker, I am your mother. <laughs> the next topic is <laughs> unlikely excerpts from a nature documentary. Do you see this little fella here? <laughs> I'm having to whisper because this woman's husband is in the room next door. <laughs> this beautiful hummingbird is no match for my squash racket. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm having to whisper because this bear has got me in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> Penguin with his head trapped in a beer can. Tragic and yet somehow hilarious. <laughs> I'm stood here, in the jungle, in my bathrobe, because my luggage is still at Heathrow. <laughs> Welcome back to Pimp My Hippo. <laughs> and here we have two insects shagging away. <laughs> 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 Out of the water climbs a majestic otter who turns... Oh, no, it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, the lion's after the impala and the lion's got the impala! Tuck in, my son! <laughs> lion one, impala nil! <laughs> I'm the ghost of Steve Irwin and welcome to Animals Kill the Daftest Bastards. <laughs> what a TV chef would never say. So, that's the bird plucked and stuffed. All that remains is to kill it. <laughs> Welcome to One Fat Lady. <laughs> and here, what you want to do is put a little bit of the brown mixture in the tin and then sprinkle a little bit of hash on the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> these Korean meatballs really are the dog's bollocks. <laughs> If you're wondering how to get the perfect skin on your parsnips, then you're mental. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Delia Smith, and today we're going to cook a panda. <laughs> <laughs> Are we, am I invisible in this fucking jacket? <laughs> I think you... So, I've marinated it for half an hour, seared it for 15 seconds, and now I'm drizzling it on my buttocks. <laughs> you just need two things to make this dish. What you need is a takeaway menu and a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight on Russian cookery, cyanide, polonium, and a crab stuffed with explosives. <laughs> It's not going to be worth it now, is it? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> stop! <laughs> the next topic is... Bad thing to say at the opening of the new Wembley Stadium. Is it just me, or does it all feel a bit wobbly? <laughs> Due to a double booking, England's first match is against Simply Red. <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, James Blunt. <laughs> Welcome to the 2008 Cup Final. So if you could all make your way to the coaches, we're on our way to Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> and all for the same price as building a rope ladder between the Earth and Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> Can Mr Bin Laden report to lost property, please? <laughs> Mr Bin Laden. <laughs> and who knows, maybe here, one day, with the right linesman, England can cheat their way to another World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe one day, with the right bunch of hooligans from Scotland, <laughs> these goalposts can get trashed all over again. <laughs> Cost £100 million to demolish Wembley. If you'd had your last game against Scotland, we'd have done it for nothing. <laughs> Unlikely things to hear on Comic Relief. And we'd just like to thank the donation of 160,000 turkeys from a <laughs> Mr B. Matthews. <laughs> Remember, tonight isn't all about comedy. Here's Ben Elton. <laughs> of course, we're also supporting projects in the UK. For example, this is my extension. <laughs> My name's Ade, I'm seven years old, and I have to walk five miles every day to get fresh water, so I really don't have time to play footballs with fat celebrities. Fuck off and give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> right, here's one for you. Three Ethiopians walk into a bar. <laughs> if we remove all these villagers' cataracts, one day, they might be able to make our shoes. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe it either. Some of those kids are fatter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, 20% of everything you give goes directly to a grinning warlord wearing a necklace of human finger bones. <laughs> this village had one goat until I ate it. <laughs> Later, Dawn French will be climbing into a bath of beans. Not for charity, it's her supper. <laughs> <laughs> We're from the Maasai tribe. When are we going to get that money for that eye dent we did? <laughs> <laughs> OK. The next topic is the worst thing your new neighbour could say. What day do the bins go out round here? My wife's body's starting to stink. <laughs> well, looks like we got ourselves a fresh one. <laughs> I hope my turkeys won't be keeping you awake. <laughs> <laughs> my wife and I are nudists and have been for the past 70 years. <laughs> You're bigger than you look through the telescope. <laughs> Welcome to the street, or as we like to call it, the cul-de-sac of Christ. <laughs> Do you like the music? <laughs> of... <laughs> what the... what the... <laughs> I can see you when you sleep. Yes, that's right. The uh, wife breeds rottweilers, the children are in a brass band, and I'm a paedophile. <laughs> it's simple. Your dog and I are in love. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing to hear over a tannoy system. Only you can hear me. <laughs> The train to Nottingham will arrive in five minutes, which is a pity, because this is Tesco. <laughs> Second floor, but you can't get out. 
<laughs> Welcome to our school sports day. Mark will probably get stuck in a sack. Ha, bloody ha. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody come to the salami slicer, please? <laughs> If anybody has found a Vix inhaler... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we all know there will be a bomb on the tube, but will it be today? <laughs> <laughs> the lift doors are closing, leaving you trapped in an airless, windowless coffin, <laughs> hurtling downwards at a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Would the parents of the child that fell into the tiger enclosure please come to Lost Property to collect her shoes? <laughs> the plane's about to land in Glasgow. Passengers are reminded to set their watches back 25 years. <laughs> Is <laughs> unlikely lines from the final Harry Potter book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Hermione, I can get rid of it. Chlamydia disappearo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hermione, said Harry, unbuttoning his zip. I'll show you a really magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> Harry had always thought that he'd meet his death at the hands of Voldemort, so imagine his surprise when the doctors told him that he was HIV positive. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no, there is no post today, said Ron. The owls are on a one-day strike over the <laughs> and Midway through the orgy, Ron winked at Harry. This is better than Quidditch, his eyes seemed to say. <laughs> it was a magic mirror that showed the future, and in it, Harry seemed to be a 30-year-old actor appearing in something called The Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Get the snitch, said Harry. I'll tie him down and you can drill through his kneecaps. <laughs> As the old man stood in front of him in his robes, clutching his wand, Harry regretted transferring to Catholic school. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harry. I'm having a baby, and it's yours, said Professor McGonagall. <laughs> <laughs> then Harry says something, Hermione says something, oh, who cares? I'm minted. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely lines to hear in an episode of Doctor Who. Between series, I paint the TARDIS red and sell coffee. <laughs> yes, Doctor, I am your arch nemesis. You may also recognise me as Giuseppe DiMarco from EastEnders. <laughs> I have many walk on parts in casualty as wounded man. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we've materialised in the 19th century. Oh, no, it's Glasgow 2007. <laughs> this is not a waste of time. You are a Time Lord. Have you ever given money to the Labour Party? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to save the Earth, but as a doctor, I won't be working evenings or weekends. <laughs> K9, stop humping the toaster! <laughs> Welcome to my Dalek poetry reading. <laughs> <laughs> this one is called Daffodils. <laughs> <laughs> Exterminate Daffodils. <laughs> OK, the next topic is bad ways for Gordon Brown to address the nation. You can take our lives, but you'll never take our freedom. <laughs> This isn't my sporing. It's Hazel Blears asking for a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> the economy is in ruins. I blame the previous Chancellor. <laughs> you thought Tony Blair was a <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> People 
people of Britain, when I address you like this, did you know sometimes I get so excited <laughs> a little bit of wee comes out? <laughs> <laughs> you might like Tony more, but you'll hate my wife less. <laughs> In these troubled times between our nations, I feel I need to reach out to President Putin and say, I have shagged your mother. <laughs> <laughs> it's time you learnt the truth, Earthling. <laughs> Citizens of New Atlantis, I bring greetings <laughs> from our brothers, the Crab Men. <laughs> No. Don't make me do it, Mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm G to the B, and this is how I roll. <laughs> you got beef with me, you kiss my A double S ho. <laughs> on likely lines to hear on a science program. After working on the equation for 30 years, Professor Stevens made an incredible discovery. His wife had left him and he'd wasted his life. <laughs> <laughs> The trade in human organs is shocking. This kidney cost me nearly a tenner. <laughs> Today, we're going to be making a bomb using japati flour and hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> Which is faster, a dog or a crossbow bolt? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how God created the world in seven days. <laughs> Hello, my name's Jade Goody. <laughs> and that is how we can prove that aluminium is gay. <laughs> <laughs> A cure for acute depression may be just around the corner. Oh, here it is. A train. <laughs> and as the mighty lion shakes the life out of this tiny gazelle, I feel strangely horny. <laughs> <laughs> well, that test was conclusive. Cats have one life. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next up again. Questions omitted from the British citizenship test. Can you fly a plane? <laughs> Can you land a plane? <laughs> Pat Butcher, shag or die? <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever look at the ingredients on Ready Steady Cook <laughs> and think, I could make a bomb out of that? <laughs> Is there any chance you could represent us in the 2012 Olympics? <laughs> in which case, you're in. <laughs> Boris Johnson, true or false? <laughs> Do you like the music <laughs> of Shawadi <laughs> Wadi? <laughs> this map of Britain, can you point to where Gloucester used to be? <laughs> Are you paying too much for your car insurance? <laughs> OK, let's leave it at The worst thing to hear on holiday. Many of you in this safari will be wondering why I'm sprinkling you with a barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Butlins. <laughs> The plane has lost all power. Feel free to use your cell phone. <laughs> Let me feel your arm. Let me see your teeth. Take him. <laughs> Hello? This is your captain speaking. <laughs> We're up! <laughs> you want a double or a single room? Double? Hmm. 
Ramon, build a double. <laughs> in the event of the cabin decompressing, oxygen masks will drop from the ceiling and dangle in front of your blue dead faces. <laughs> From your bedroom window, you have a lovely view of the town's ageing nuclear facility. <laughs> yes, I know you've got a restraining order out on me, but I, I don't think it applies abroad. <laughs> There's a bar in the swimming pool after yesterday's riot. <laughs> <laughs> you must be the only person in the hotel who isn't going to the Star Trek convention. <laughs> Of you. Welcome to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next topic is unlikely lines to hear in a TV show. On Sean the Sheep this week, Sean has a big surprise when a nasty Defra man comes round with a <laughs> bolt gun. <laughs> so get dialing because remember those phone lines close at midnight yesterday. <laughs> And now, the Antiques Roadshow. This programme contains scenes of tedious dullness right from the start. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have an opinion on this news story, why not keep it to yourself? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Mock the Week After Dark. I'm Dar O'Brien, and this is my penis. <laughs> This week on Location, 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 Mohammed is looking for a pied d'etat within easy reach of an international airport. <laughs> <laughs> and now over to Kate Humble, who's going to kick the face off a badger. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to India with Sanjeev Baskar and me, Jade Goody. <laughs> It's Shostakovich week on ITV1. <laughs> <laughs> on this week's Time Team, Tony Robinson goes round to Fred West's old house. <laughs> <laughs> well, now over to Sean for a blind stab at the weather. <laughs> <laughs> no deal, Edmunds! You're going to give me the money or I'm going to start shooting! <laughs> Weird things to see on a road sign. Fancy a shack? Park and ride, 200 yards. <laughs> Stop. Hammer time. <laughs> <laughs> you are leaving Croydon. Well done. <laughs> Help me, I'm trapped in a sign-making factory. <laughs> When the red lights are flashing, get down with the groove. <laughs> Accident on opposite carriageway. Quick, look! <laughs> Amarillo, this way. <laughs> you are now leaving trowel services. Wish you hadn't eaten that for 26 miles. <laughs> If you can read this, you've crashed into my front garden. <laughs> you are entering Scotland. No salad for 200 miles. <laughs> no left turn. No right turn. No entry. No reversing. Get out of the car and put your hands on your head. <laughs> Do it! <laughs> River ahead, which your sat-nav thinks is a road. <laughs> You're lonely, aren't you, Russell? <laughs> <laughs> Sharp left turn ahead. Careful, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Giant exclamation mark! Ahead! <laughs> <laughs> Bracknell, twinned with hell. <laughs> Warning, little chef, one mile. 
Next up again, unlikely things to hear in the House of Lords. Would anyone like to swap a packet of space raiders for some Dairy Lee Dunkables? <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome our newest member, Lord Voldemort. <laughs> I used to be a lord, but after the operation, I'm a lady. <laughs> that, uh, gentlemen, is the motion, and now I will clear it up. <laughs> I want to recriminalize homosexuality so that I can feel dirty when I do it. <laughs> Changed my name to E Lordy. I want you all to call me Lordy Lordy. <laughs> I am the Lord of the Dance. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Lord Ocean Finance. <laughs> As a life peer, I would like to tender my resignation. <laughs> <laughs> this is Davina. You are live in the house. <laughs> Please don't swear. Bad things for a by-election candidate to say. I would like to kiss your baby, but we don't want to go down that road again. <laughs> <laughs> I am the perfect candidate. This is an election, and I am bi. <laughs> <laughs> Vote for me, Doris McGarvey. I'd like to say no relation, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Power gives me wood. <laughs> <laughs> I've been knocking on doors in this constituency for weeks, and it's completely unconnected to the recent stranglings. <laughs> knife crime must end. Just last week, I was given a steak knife when I clearly ordered the fish. <laughs> if elected, living standards will go up. For me and my wife. <laughs> I would say... The fact that the Labour Party haven't put forward a candidate has not devalued this election at all. Ask my fellow opponents, Timmy Mallet, Elvis and the Honey Monster. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to bring crime in this constituency down by patrolling the streets at night dressed as a man-leopard. impeccable green credentials because I've never used deodorant or had a bath. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing about politics, but I can crush a ripe pear between my buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> OK. The next topic is unnerving things to hear during a medical examination. Yes, uh, I'll be operating. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! Come here, you've got to look at this! <laughs> <laughs> That's your smear test done, and I do have some bad news. I'm the janitor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, it's definitely stuck up there. <laughs> we, may, uh, we may have to use the ferret. <laughs> Uh, so, if you'd like to just pop your clothes over there, next to mine. <laughs> You'll live for about a week. <laughs> well, there's good news and bad news. But don't worry, I can give the good news to your widow. over. It was just a spider on the microscope. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how does it feel if I touch you here? And here? And there? <laughs> <laughs> These drugs don't actually work, but every time I prescribe them, I get a free pen. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, 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 no. You can't have your old hip back, Mrs Smith. <laughs> I fed it to my dog. <laughs> this is one of the healthiest x-rays I've ever seen. But if we compare that with yours... <laughs> Right, um, I thought for a change, um, I could cough and you could hold my balls. <laughs> you have the body of someone half your age growing inside your womb. <laughs> well, there's good news, you've had a baby. And the bad news, it's blown your cock off. <laughs> Things you're unlikely to hear on a quiz show. <laughs> Here is your starter for ten. Spring rolls, sesame toast and chilli balls with corn. <laughs> oh, and welcome to Ask the Family. Mr Fritzel, where's the rest of them? <laughs> Hello, we're Ant and Deck and welcome to Double Our Money. Oh, Double your money. <laughs> I'm Anne Robinson, and if my Botox wears off, my face will turn into a scrotum. <laughs> <clears throat> Look at what you could have won if you went to school. <laughs> <laughs> Name? Ted Smith. Occupation? Carpenter. And your chosen specialised subject? The life and work of the carpenter Ted Smith. <laughs> <laughs> For a million pounds, complete this well known phrase. The. Ah. <laughs> uh, like a vowel. Vowel. Mm. Vowel. <laughs> vowel. <laughs> vowel. <laughs> Is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Richard Whiteley. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Welcome to Inflation Adjusted. Who wants to be a Zimbabwe millionaire? <laughs> it's the banker. He says he's got your kids. <laughs> and your question is on celebrities. What jocular Irish host of the popular show Mock the Week is known by his friends as Dobby for his uncanny resemblance to the house elf in Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> The next topic is things that would change the atmosphere at a dinner party. Ignore the banging. She's been in there for 24 years. <laughs> Help yourself to Nibbles. He was our favourite hamster, but it's what he would have wanted. <laughs> Are you sure this is pork? <laughs> it's just because Mike Crackling has a tattoo. <laughs> Don't worry, we don't say grace. We just sacrifice a child to the great god Imhotep. <laughs> Doorbell! Excellent, that'll be Heather Mills and James Blunt. Hope he's brought his guitar. <laughs> I hope nobody's allergic to nuts, because I like to rest mine on the table. <laughs> well, this is absolutely lovely. I say we all raise a glass to the floor! <laughs> Ten of you arrived, only one will leave. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, long story short, after about two hours you couldn't tell what was poo and what was chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> there is a vegetarian option. You can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Lines you wouldn't hear in a superhero movie. To the bat caravan! I'm a superhero! Now, Russell, you've drawn an S on your forehead and you sprinkle glitter on your penis. <laughs> no, they call me Catwoman because I can lick my own arse. <laughs> hey, Lois, just before we fly off, I want to check none of your liquids are over 100 millilitres. <laughs> 
You're trapped, Spider-Man, trapped in this enormous bath. <laughs> No, R. Kelly, you can't join the Fantastic Four. It's not enough to believe you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> Biff! Bam! Kapow! Nutted! Bottled! Slashed! <laughs> is it a bird? Is it a plane? Whatever it is, it's heading straight for the World Trade Centre. <laughs> What do you mean the swastika's already taken? I've had my cape made now and everything. <laughs> so, tell me, why do they call you Flash? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I may not seem as dangerous as other supervillains, but soon I, Dr. Sheep, <laughs> will rule the world. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> What's that, Joker? You'll be back. Somehow, I don't think you will be. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely letters for an agony aunt to receive. Dear Deirdre, I'm leaving you. <laughs> I want to trace my father. Could you suggest a good marker pen? <laughs> I have recently discovered the pleasures of butter in sex. I smear it on the doorknob to stop the kids coming in. <laughs> my voice is breaking and there is hair on my chest. Is this normal? You're Sally Jenkins, <laughs> age nine. <laughs> Dear bitch. I have trouble making friends. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Dear Deirdre, can that giant man lift me up like a baby? <laughs> <laughs> you bet your asses, Dad. <laughs> I have been saving up for a sex change. I don't care what my wife says. She is going to have it! <laughs> Dear Auntie, my testicles are the size of space hoppers. I don't need any advice, I just wanted to tell someone. <laughs> <laughs> my husband and I are 82, and he has recently lost interest in sex. Thank God! <laughs> My wife says that I'm a compulsive liar. I think she's jealous that my reggae duet with Rio Ferdinand has reached number one. <laughs> I know where you live! <laughs> my problem is that I can only ejaculate when I hear a buzzer. <laughs> Commercials that never made it to air. Masturbation. Are you getting your five a day? <laughs> Worried about bankruptcy? Then why not paddle your canoe into the middle of the ocean? <laughs> Lidl's own brand shampoo, because you're worthless. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit me at 40 miles an hour, there's an 80% chance I'll die. If you hit me at 30 miles an hour, there's an 80% chance I'll live. Stop trying to hit me. <laughs> Poor and too lazy to cook. That's why mums shop at Iceland. <laughs> this isn't just a gimp mask. <laughs> this is an S&M gimp mask. <laughs> Do your knickers feel uncomfortable on? Try Bacardi Breezy. <laughs> if you find flying boring, fly Qantas, you might die. <laughs> <laughs> the Daily Mail. Racist in public, so you don't have to be. 
<laughs> I'm Fern Breton, and this machine took two stone off me. It's a bacon slicer. <laughs> I'm John McCain. Why not buy my fitness video? <laughs> Are you thinking of drinking and driving? Remember, the M20 is surprisingly quiet on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost your bags. We've lost your bags. <laughs> From Gillette comes the new sensor Uber 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 XL for that closest ever shave. In fact, this one slices your face like a potato peeler. <laughs> it's too close. Get the previous Gillette sensor. <laughs> it turns out we couldn't get closer than that one. <laughs> 31 million names on three great discs. Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Now that's why I call a monumental cock up, Volume One. <laughs> Max Mosey doesn't do Nazi themed orgies, but if he did, they'd probably be the best <laughs> <laughs> Nazi themed orgies in the world. Okay, next up again. Bad things to hear on opening the door in the middle of the night. Hello, I'm Daryl O'Brien. I'd like to talk to you about Mock the Week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back from my canoe trip. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a peeping Tom in your garden, but I warned him. This is my patch. <laughs> uh, I'll come to fix your washing machine. You asked for a call out between 12 and 5. <laughs> Hello, oh, I'm afraid my cock is stuck in your letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm Max Mosley, and I've been a very naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid your husband's been murdered. Could I borrow a shovel? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Gordon Brown. Just hold me. Bad things to say at a job interview. What can I bring to the job? A burning hatred of the West, a hook for a hand and a pilot's licence. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the five-year employment gap, yeah. I was canoeing. Right, I hope we can all be professional about the fact that I've just split up with all three of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really only here because I'm hoping to slip on a wet floor and then fall off a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've had a few changes of address, one wood scrubs, Broadmoor, but for the last three months I've lived in your air conditioning. <laughs> Um, I'm really into diversity. In my last team, I made sure that we had a black, a fruit and a fatty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have always wanted to work in a motel. I'm telling them, Mother, I'm telling them! <laughs> <laughs> this job would be a great opportunity for me to steal a shitload of stationery. <laughs> I remember you from the dungeon. How you doing? It's me, Gimpy Terry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gimpy Terry's mate. <laughs> <laughs> Sum myself up in three words. <laughs> I suppose it would have to be killer alien vagina. <laughs> What do you mean I'm underqualified to be a plumber? I'm five hours late. I've done a piss in your sink. <laughs> when can I start? Yesterday. But I can only work till today. <laughs> <laughs> Nine 
till five, nine till five, my medication wears off at three. <laughs> The next topic is things you wouldn't hear on Songs of Praise. Hello, Canterbury. Let's make some fucking noise! <laughs> well, the locals here on the Shetland Isles have given us a tremendous welcome. Today we have our act of worship, and tomorrow they're burning me in a wicker man. <laughs> they call him G.O.D. and he the Big Daddy. He looked like me, but he more beardy. <laughs> I'm Sister Margaret, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> the parishioners will now go forward to receive communion if they can get past Atlas and Predator. <laughs> <laughs> Christians in one corner, Muslims in the other. Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Well, the goat is strapped to the altar, so let's begin. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Such a shame there's no one actually up there to have heard it. <laughs> and we appear to have a streaker. No, one of the altar boys has escaped from the vestry. <laughs> If you're enjoying this, why not turn over to BBC Three, where you can enjoy Songs of Praise uncut. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Choir of the Week. They're not the Von Trapp family, but they were the Trapp family. It's the Fritzels from Austria! <laughs> the next reading is from St Paul's first letter to Jim Fexit. As you wouldn't hear at the Olympics. The athletes will now go forward to receive their medals and complimentary prawn crackers. <laughs> and there is the Chinese coxless four. It's a harsh punishment, but that's what happens if you lose a heat. <laughs> and look, there's Paula Radcliffe in a clown outfit holding a sparkler. <laughs> We can't find a national anthem to Togo. We're going to have to use the Benny Hill theme tune. <laughs> and that is a personal best. The first time I've managed to crack one off to the weightlifting. <laughs> oh, my God, things are really exciting here at the sailing. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes the bell. Someone has stolen the bell. <laughs> Now, over to the Paralympics with Glenn Hoddle. <laughs> she's past one, she's past two. Paula Radcliffe is very ill indeed. <laughs> he meddled in Sydney, he meddled in Athens, and he's going to meddle here unless someone catches him. <laughs> and coming up, your chance to watch teenagers in leotards without feeling bad. <laughs> To show you just how polluted this city is, the javelin has got stuck in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> the leading British swimmer has had to pull out of the 400 metres freestyle because he couldn't find a pound for the locker. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should have done better in the shooting, and this young team from South Manchester know it. <laughs> And anyone who thinks that this opening ceremony is amazing has never been to Blackpool on ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. OK, the next topic is... Lines you wouldn't hear in a war film. We've managed to crack the Germans' code. Turns out they were sending messages in German. <laughs> Why are we speaking English? <laughs> I'm afraid we can't afford goggles. So what we're going to have to do, we're all going to have to go like this. 
<laughs> Terribly sorry, Sergeant. It's just that when you said let's all band together and take Jerry from behind... <laughs> OK, chaps, here's the strategy for escaping from the prisoner of war camp. We sit it out till the end of the war. <laughs> I can't feel my legs! That's because your arms have been blown off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saving Private Ryan money on his car insurance. <laughs> <clears throat> Is anyone else embarrassed that we've all turned up in the same outfit? <laughs> <laughs> There's only one way to settle this war through the medium of darts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Tommy. I'll... I'll make sure she gets it. It's chlamydia, isn't it? <laughs> You've each been selected for this mission because you're unknown to the enemy and you each have a special skill. Professor Hawking, John Leslie, Phil Neville, the Wu-Tang Clan, <laughs> Usher, the Sugar Puffs Monster and Daniel Day-Lewis. Welcome to Operation Mindfuck. <laughs> <laughs> Questions that were rejected from this year's exams. If the answer is nine, what is the question? <laughs> When you finish this exam, please will you turn your paper over and mark it. <laughs> Using Darwin's theory of evolution, explain Boris Johnson. <laughs> Vladimir has 10,000 tanks and you have three. Why would you start a war? <laughs> <laughs> <Discuss>. <laughs> By the year 2015, the population of the Earth will have increased by 20%. How do we find Kerry Katona and stop her? <laughs> Complete the following sequence. 16, 35, 24, 8, 9. Now open the safe, grab the stuff and get in the getaway car. <laughs> An object is travelling at 750 miles an hour, encounters resistance and slows to zero. For how many months will Richard Hammond have to wear nappies? <laughs> <laughs> on the diagram below, show on the body where you like to be touched. <laughs> <laughs> Describe Uranus without telling your parents. <laughs> Amy is 16. At least she said she was. How much <laughs> trouble are you in? <laughs> Complete this crop rotation. Wheat, fallow, rock festival, BNP rally. <laughs> <laughs> if everybody in Class A is called Tom, Thomas or Tommy, and every second boy in Class B is called Tim, Timothy or Timmy, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> OK, <laughs> the next topic is... Lines you wouldn't hear in a costume drama. Henry chewed her. But why did he chew her? <laughs> <laughs> the Zulus have us surrounded, sir. They're standing on the horizon, waving their spears. Wait a minute. <laughs> Those aren't spears. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Darcy, I do believe you've poked me on Facebook. <laughs> So, King Henry, I'm your fifth wife. Hang on, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, but... Oh, shit. <laughs> and for the latest news from the big house, tune in to Pride and Prejudice Extra, starting now on BBC <laughs> Three. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Pride and Extreme Prejudice, <laughs> where Elizabeth is surprised to hear Mr Darcy's views on queers and Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think wearing this bustle makes my arse look big? <laughs> Let me read the signal from the victory. Are you paying too much for your car insurance? <laughs> I worked for the Duke of Wellington when he invented the Wellington boot and the Earl of Sandwich when he invented the sandwich. But I suppose my happiest time 
was working for Lord Strapon. <laughs> <laughs> My liege, your desire to marry again will split the church. Does it have to be a gay Nigerian? <laughs> The Duke, my daughter, has been itching to meet you. Chlamydia! <laughs> Unlikely greetings cards. <clears throat> Congratulations, you're 18. On a list of 20 people I'm going to kill. <laughs> my heart goes out in sympathy. I know your life is torn. I can't believe your dear sweet mum caught you watching all that porn. <laughs> Congratulations on conquering your drug and alcohol dependency. We're having a party to celebrate, but you can't come. <laughs> I know you're green, I've done my bit. This card is made of recycled shit. <laughs> Get well soon. P.S. I know it's terminal, but they didn't have a card for that. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. I'm locked up in Broadmoor and thinking of you. <laughs> thinking of you at this difficult time has given me an erection. <laughs> You're moving! We've repossessed your house. <laughs> Congratulations on passing your test. You have HIV. OK. The next topic is things you didn't hear at the Olympics. I am the little girl from the opening <laughs> ceremony. This is my real voice. <laughs> <laughs> that gymnast is so supple. If my wife could do that, we'd still be together. <laughs> next, the rhythmic gymnastics. You might want to start beating out your own rhythm at home. <laughs> That English track team is awesome! <laughs> and it's gold for Ireland! <laughs> well, that'll be low marks for synchronicity, but high marks for execution. Clean shot to the head, backwards off the board, pool full of blood, magnificent. <laughs> Next, over to Gabby Logan, who's going to tell us whether or not she's a transvestite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and... <laughs> and it... <laughs> go on, go again, man, go again. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. And there's fuck all no. for Ireland! <laughs> no, no, I'm not letting you off for the last Ireland joke. You're not getting on again for the rest of the show. <laughs> you are not doing another one for the rest of the show, all right? Uh... <laughs> You've just been paddy Oh, wet. let's look at the clock. It's more interesting than the show jumping. <laughs> the one thing we're all thinking during the Olympics, doesn't Claire Balding look like Eddie Izzard? <laughs> Nobody can touch this Russian gymnast, except their coach and their uncle. <laughs> and here <laughs> comes... Two <laughs> <laughs> <Here> days. <it is. laughs> Well, what a morning. We've got medals in the Yingling, Yingling, Tiddly and Poe. <laughs> Chinese athlete with number 36 in his chest. That means he's a chicken chow man. <laughs> <laughs> and he... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the French have four faults their language, their food, <laughs> their underarm hair, and the fact that they are French. <laughs> A surprise in the canoeing where the British athlete has gone missing. <laughs> <laughs> it was after I heard the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> that I realised the one thing I hadn't heard at the Olympics, right, was fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Lines you wouldn't hear in a sci-fi film. We've discovered an alien queen and she's laid enough eggs to take over the galaxy. 
This writing, it says... Katona. <laughs> <laughs> I am C-3PO. This is my cousin, WD-40. <laughs> All right, Chewie, you look different after that back sack and crack wax. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is my brother, Obi-Careful, my sister, Obi-Have. <laughs> my dog, Obi-A-Sport. <laughs> Use the force, Luke. I've run out of lubricant. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's right. We aliens have learned your language by uh, listening to your radio broadcasts. <laughs> the androids are going berserk, Captain. Let's try switching them off and then on again. <laughs> 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 Start eight twenty one seventy one point six. Captain's log. Still won't flush. I'll try again later. <laughs> Vader, you look like a big black dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, um, I've been repeatedly firing this laser at that alien, uh, but all I've managed to do is improve its eyesight and give it a Brazilian. <laughs> It's not easy being a Vulcan, Captain. <laughs> Due to my death grip, I can't masturbate. I've <laughs> 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 <coughs> had that hairball in there for years. <laughs> <laughs> You're loving Chewie. I need to break into the Death Star's computer system. Who knows Darth Maul's mother's maiden name? <laughs> Captain, the ethereal sounds being made by this beautiful dying creature from another world is some funky shit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear on the radio. In that episode of the Hugh Dennis story, <laughs> Hugh Dennis was played by Bruce Willis, Steve Punt was played by Hugh Dennis, and the band was Shawaddy Waddy. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> you touch my turnips and I'll fuck you up. <laughs> and now for a travel update. There is an accident on the M1. It's a good one, so hurry up. <laughs> There's flames and everything. <laughs> Next, a book at bedtime. Martin Jarvis reads the speeches of Hitler in a high-pitched girl's voice. <laughs> good afternoon, this is Radio 4, and I have a regional accent. <laughs> <laughs> Next on Radio 4, the dogging forecast. <laughs> Here on Traffic Watch, we're predicting long delays on the M4, where I'm about to hit my ex-wife's car with this helicopter. <laughs> and now it's the panel show where our panel try to stave off premature ejaculation. Yes, it's just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> This is breakfast with Tony Blackburn. I'm not actually on the radio. I've broken into your kitchen. Do you want toast? <laughs> <laughs> Next, more lesbian propaganda with Woman's Hour. <laughs> well, you've certainly stumped the Gardener's Question Time panel. None of us know how to bring a fox to orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Heart FM. The same five songs all day long. <laughs> 6 a.m. Welcome to the breakfast show. Who's up at 6 a.m.? <laughs> My wife's leaving me. <laughs> My dad didn't get up at 6 a.m. and he was a fucking minor. <laughs> Unlikely small ads. Did you see a hit and run in the Cromwell Road on Tuesday night? Please get in touch, because I'm keen to silence any witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> Parents, worried about unruly teenagers ruining your house? You need my book, My House, My Rules, by Joseph Fritzl. <laughs> mm. 
Please get in touch. Our eyes met yesterday. You were the blonde undressing in the bedroom. I was the man lurking in your garden. <laughs> <laughs> Legs, bums and tums. Wanted by cannibal. <laughs> Slightly used condoms for sale. <laughs> no weirdos. <laughs> Are you an alcoholic? There's a sale on at Oddbins. <laughs> <laughs> House prices falling, debts rising, feel like you can't quite cope. Pull yourself together! <laughs> Gardening done. Think I'll put my feet up now. <laughs> Are you looking for a plumber who'll do a good job at a reasonable price? You've got no chance. <laughs> Anger management CDs for sale. Don't ring before noon. <laughs> Are you struggling to get out of the bath? It's pretty much game over for you then. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is unlikely things to hear on question time. <clears throat> Allow me to answer your question with a question. Why don't you fuck off? <laughs> I'm going to take a question from a black man without mentioning that he's black. The man in the red jumper, please. <laughs> <laughs> Do I believe the economy's in recession? Well, I believe it was Churchill who said, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David Dimbleby, you haven't answered a question all night. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> A good question there. Is the BBC dumbing down? What do you think, Barry Chuckle? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my question is for Delilah. Why, why, why? <laughs> Welcome to Question Time, coming to you this week live from Spearmint Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> question Time, tonight we're in Norwich. Let's say hello to the audience. Look, men from Magic Picture Box go <laughs> speaky speaky. <laughs> <laughs> Is the wrong answer, Charles Clark? Take off an item of clothing. <laughs> so, good question, Gordon Brown. Why don't you shove your tax increases up your ass? <laughs> If your dog isn't here, Mr. Blunkett, who's sniffing my balls? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a question for Boris Johnson. Do you know where you are? <laughs> Is Britain becoming more misogynist? Let's ask this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Russell and Andy. Things you wouldn't hear from a weather forecaster. The Met Office have issued a weather warning. They've told the weather not to do that again or there'll be trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Temperatures could rise to 31 degrees. Shut! I've left my baby in the car! <laughs> <laughs> a hurricane tonight will be caused by low pressure and God's hatred of homosexuality. <laughs> A huge depression over Scotland, and now the weather. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, a warning to hay fever sufferers. Don't come sneezing near me or I'll rip your face off. <laughs> 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 so, here's the summary. Monday shite, Tuesday shite, Wednesday shite, Thursday bollocks. <laughs> the humidity's rising. The barometer's going low. Tonight, for the first time, just about half past ten, <laughs> it's going to start raining men. <laughs> the outlook's bright for the weekend. I've got three grams of coke in my pocket and my wife's on holiday. <laughs> well, let's go to Carol on the roof of Television Centre. She's not meant to be there. She's just a bit depressed. <laughs> 
This part of the country is going to stay hot and wet for quite some time because that's where my girlfriend lives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, it's going to be between 17 and 21, but Berlusconi won't date older than that. <laughs> it was raining cats and dogs last night. I should know. I was throwing them off my roof. <laughs> what are you watching me for? Look out the fucking window. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be cloudier tonight. I love those German birds. <laughs> what do you care what the weather's going to be like? You look shit in all your clothes. <laughs> the next topic is... Deleted lines from Star Trek. Kirk to Enterprise. OK, how about if I stand over here? <laughs> <laughs> Scotty, that's the most convincing your accent has ever been. <laughs> Captain, I can see an alien ship approaching. It's not showing up on the radar. It's a circular vessel, some sort of lettering and number... Oh, no, sorry, it's my, it's my tax disc. <laughs> I have no emotion. My mother was a Vulcan. My father was Gordon Brown. <laughs> All right, which one of you ate my Scotch egg? <laughs> this is the Federation of Gay Planets. Open your docking bay and prepare to be boarded. <laughs> Tell you what, Spock, your towel is a lot softer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Captain's log, just seen some aliens, OMG. WTF, LOL, smiley face. <laughs> Who are these terrifying aliens? You can't call them that anymore, Captain. <laughs> it's Uhuru and Sulu. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the SS Enterprise, Mr Eccleston. <laughs> Now, which one of you put your red top in the washing with all the yellow ones? <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be some changes around here. They call me Captain Tatty Bojangles. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, Captain Picard? What's wrong? I'm a serious Shakespearean actor, <laughs> and I'm talking to the ambassador of the fucking worm people! <laughs> Unlikely things to hear on a survival show. I was first taught to eat in the bush by a French girl I went out with at university. <laughs> <laughs> to get the fish, break the ice, jump the checkout, and run! <laughs> Not only is this lake good for fish, but we can also put a body in it. <laughs> <laughs> Using excrement, mud, and twigs. They've made primitive bedding here at the Premier Travel Lodge. <laughs> I'm in the Congo. Let's sell this once and for all. Do you boys like Umbungo? <laughs> <laughs> here I am in the jungle. The mighty jungle. <laughs> I win my way, I win my way, I win... <laughs> but who... Are they truly civilised? Is it the Mbupi tribe or is it us with our books, our medicine and our internet? Oh, yes, it's us. <laughs> <laughs> of course, food is a scarce and valuable resource to these tribes people. So I've just bagged myself two nights with this fella's wife for a Twix. <laughs> You know, Ant and Deck think that their jungle's pretty tough. Well, they joined me today, there was no food, so I ate them. <laughs> the villagers get up early and walk five miles to fetch clean water every day, which begs the question, why not move the village closer? <laughs> <laughs> the strong, powerful sun is making me sweat. Oh, shit, here comes his dad. <laughs> Yeah. 
I've been living in these woods for three weeks now, but that's what happens if you're married to the Home Secretary and she catches you watching porn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bear Grylls, and this is my brother, Wolf Stir Fry. <laughs> I've just achieved my life's ambition of climbing Everest with no food and no equipment. Now do you love me, Daddy? <laughs> now do you love me? <laughs> OK, the next topic is... <laughs> Unlikely things to read on a packet. Ragu sauce. If you give this to someone who is actually from Italy, they punch you in the face. <laughs> To open, push down tab, break tab, swear repeatedly, STAB WITH A PAIR OF SCISSORS! <laughs> Serves four, you greedy bastard. Now put some of that back. <laughs> Viagra are proud sponsors of Andy Murray, for people who can only ever achieve a semi. Bag may also be used for autoerotic asphyxiation. <laughs> Fair trade coffee. If you don't like it, you're racist. <laughs> Sunny delight counts towards your five a day as minus two. <laughs> to stop diarrhea, take one teaspoon and shove it up your ass. <laughs> Adults and children over 12 years. Try not to get those two mixed up. <laughs> Cup of soup. Just add soup. <laughs> Best before date, Rehypnol. <laughs> Serving suggestion. On a plate, you thick moron. <laughs> We use only the very cheapest horse meat to make, fuck it, it's just a cat. <laughs> Deleted lines from a fantasy film. I am Aragorn, son of Arathorn, the heir to Isildur and part of the Fellowship of the Ring. Please leave a message after the tone. <laughs> Ron had been suffering from swine flu and people were avoiding him. Luckily, he was ginger and he was used to it. <laughs> I don't know why you're so upset, Harry. The original Dumbledore died three films ago and no one gave a shit. <laughs> Did you find Narnia in the wardrobe? No, Edmund. We found your porn stash. <laughs> My friends, we will never hear the word Mordor again. Taggart has been cancelled. <laughs> It's not a five-headed dog, it's girls allowed! <laughs> <laughs> I am Aslan, formed by the merger of Asda and Matalan. <laughs> we had only been there for a day, but to us it felt like 15 years. That's Birmingham! <laughs> Did you honestly think I could be defeated by someone younger? I am Arlene Phillips! <laughs> Welcome to Mordor, twinned with Swansea. <laughs> <laughs> this will never work, Frodo. <laughs> In the wardrobe, we found a magical compartment that led to the Fritzel family. <laughs> he stole it from me, my precious! My... Oh, no, it's in my pocket. <laughs> you all right, John? How's it going, all right? Yeah, how's the kids? All right? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a dwarf, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is... Things you don't want to hear from your flatmates. That's my milk in the fridge. I squeeze it out of my tits with a vice. <laughs> no 
we can't share the electricity bill. I've got a phone charger and a laptop, and you're on a life support machine. <laughs> My last flat was just like friends. Have you seen the one where Joey kills everybody? <laughs> I love talking to you. With you, I can be my real self. <laughs> <laughs> There's just two of us. Well, three if you count God. <laughs> I'd give it ten minutes in the toilet if I were you. That one could talk. <laughs> Well, if you don't think I'm a nosy bastard, why did you write that in your diary? <laughs> oh, that! That's just a novelty shower gel in the shape of a webcam. <laughs> hey, you said there wasn't enough room to swing a cat. Look at this. <laughs> Loads of room. <laughs> oh, uh, a Mr G had called? <laughs> he says it's time. <laughs> I don't see why I should pay for half the Lural when I never use any. <laughs> I tell you what, that Hoover is powerful. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there's... There's one certain way to find out who ate my <clears throat> yoghurt, an AIDS test. <laughs> Unlikely things to hear on a consumer programme. I'm Adrian Childs, <laughs> and I was shocked by the new Shrek film. <laughs> I've not been paid for it, <laughs> but I seem to be starring in it. <laughs> consumer scams are on the increase. If you'd like to find out how to stop them, send us your name and address, your date of birth, and your mother's maiden name. <laughs> I've just found out my jumper was made by Indian slave children. Can I just say they did a wonderful job? <laughs> Next, we speak to Barbara, who was devastated when she bought Daniel Beddingfield tickets that turned out to be genuine. <laughs> At first, the company seemed willing to compromise. Then we sent them a letter from Nicky Campbell and they told us to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be on this show next week because I'm going off to Nigeria to pick up my lottery winnings. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, we said that we were going to expose London's security scene. This week, we say, there's been a misunderstanding. Could I please have my kids back? <laughs> On closer inspection, Mrs Wilkins, your hamster's jacuzzi would appear to be a food blender. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Nicky Campbell, and I've been ploughing through the usual five sacks of hate mail <laughs> to find this letter complaining about washing powder. <laughs> <laughs> Today, as I stand before you penniless in the last clothes I own, we ask, is divorce biased in favour of the greedy bitch who left me? <laughs> <laughs> we got there, the weather were crap, the food were crap, the locals were racist. What a bloody brilliant holiday! <laughs> <laughs> of the half dozen condoms we tested, all but two burst in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Anne Robinson, <laughs> and without plastic surgery, I'd look like E.T.'s balls. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things a sports commentator would never say. Oh, they've called in the video referee. Which is better, alien or predator? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, and that's a beautiful uppercut. And another one. But, hey, the DJ is still not going to mm. change the track <laughs> for Stephen <laughs> Gerrard. <laughs> Jimmy White holding up the cue there as he collapses at the telenoid bins. <laughs> Welcome to Robot Wars. Cruncher, ready! Stephen Hawkins, ready. <laughs> and England have won the Ashes. <laughs> it's the women's 100 metres final, and from left to right, it's no, no, yes, <laughs> maybe. From behind. <laughs> Definitely not. 
<laughs> the Queen smashes Camilla in the face and Prince Philip hits her with a hammer. This is what I call a royal rumble. <laughs> <laughs> Venus Williams has brought something different to the ladies' game. Male genitalia. <laughs> 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 Oh, he's great with a dead ball. When I had one, I had to sit down for a week. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, think that massive widescreen close-up of the wedgie goes some way to explaining why we don't normally televise judo. <laughs> <laughs> and that bloody smear is the reason you don't see a lot of streakers in Formula One. <laughs> Some people on the pitch, they think it's all over. It is now. The Chinese secret police have shot them. <laughs> well, he's finally got his head down. His hands are firmly round the shaft. Which is why I'm handing over to John Inverdale. <laughs> overpaid, overpaid, knocks it on to overrated. Overrated <laughs> on to possible rapist. Possible <laughs> rapist, knocks it forward. <laughs> closet gay, goal! <laughs> Unlikely lines from a thriller. Michael, Peter, David, Vladimir, I think we may have a spy in the organisation. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the Pentagon, then the triangle, and then the square. Ah, <laughs> oh, pussy galore, Bond here. I've been told by my doctor that I need to contact all previous partners. <laughs> The owner of this motel dresses up as his mother and stabs people. But the guidebook says it's still better than the Ibis. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to go to Warsaw, meet a man called Borislav. You'll then ask him why he didn't fix my plumbing before he left for home. <laughs> Miss Scarlet looked at him through the window. He had one massive testicle like a space hopper. <laughs> that was why they called him Professor Plum. This is no ordinary pen, Bond. Turn it upside down, the woman's clothes drop off and you can see it. <laughs> red or green, red or green, which do I cut? Come on, they're only peppers. How long is this salad going to take? <laughs> we need to find the third man. There's no way Amanda Holden will shag just two of us. <laughs> Here's... Simon. <laughs> The Orient Express has been cancelled. However, there was a murder on the temporary Orient replacement bus. <laughs> I have amnesia. The tattoos on my body will tell me what happened. Dara was here. <laughs> I'd been a serial killer for four years, but they'd never given me a nickname. Then, you bite one guy in the ass, <laughs> and suddenly you're the butt muncher. <laughs> ah, the butt muncher's got me! The butt muncher's got me! OK, the next topic is... Bad things to say at a wedding. <laughs> I do. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, the vowels are simple. Just repeat after me. Eeny, meeny, macaraca, rare ride, dominaca, chicka, bocca, lollipop, rom, pom, push. <laughs> and we will now sing hymn number 225. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> when John went down on one knee, I wish I'd known that he was having a stroke. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd like to thank Elsie for the flowers. It was her funeral I nicked them from. <laughs> so your best man's in an absolute state. That's my mum. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's my job to tell some amusing stories about Gavin. So, first of all, for a kick-off, he's a hermaphrodite. <laughs> <laughs> my bride always wears white. Isn't that right, Dolly? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Carol's family have always had their doubts about me. So, first of all, let me explain 
why I'm naked. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first gay wedding, so you must be the pretty one. <laughs> to my new son-in-law, I would say this. You have released me. This monster is yours now. <laughs> I would like to apologise for the state of my clothes and the smell of sick only I spent last night in a skip. <laughs> anyway, dearly beloved, <laughs> we are gathered here today. People have said to me, why have you stopped being a bachelor after so long? And I say, well, look at her. <laughs> she's wealthy and she's dying. <laughs> a traditional Norfolk wedding without a speech from the father of the bride and groom. <laughs> Bad things to hear at the psychiatrist. I don't want you to think of me as a psychiatrist. I want you to think of me as a mental patient who killed the psychiatrist before you got here. <laughs> <laughs> you think you are a potato? On the couch, please. <laughs> Welcome to your first session of Freudian analysis. What seems to be the penis? <laughs> well, you say that you're paranoid, but I have a report here that says you looked very relaxed in the bath this morning. <laughs> oh, yes. I can see why you fancy your mother. She's something of a fox. <laughs> I see you've tried to commit suicide five times. Your dad was right. You are useless. <laughs> You've been coming here for six months to talk about your trust issues. Well, we've been filming you for Britain's nuttiest bastards. <laughs> yes, I think your parents caused you problems from a very early age, Clitorina. <laughs> your thoughts that you're horrifically unattractive are all in your mind, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> OK, word association. I'm going to say a word, and I want you to say the first thing that pops into your breasts. <laughs> wow, that's really interesting. Do you mind if I use some of this stuff as lyrics from my band? <laughs> <laughs> you have emotional problems and a below-average IQ. I'm prescribing Hollyoaks. <laughs> Oh, that's a classic dream. It means you're a paedophile. <laughs> I want you to go to your happy place. Judging by the size of you, that's probably Greg's. <laughs> Hypnosis could certainly help with your intimacy issues. While you were unconscious, I rested my nuts on your head. <laughs> the next topic is... On lighter things to hear on a TV talent show. 2007's winner Leon Jackson is still selling records in his Saturday job at HMV Paisley. <laughs> of course it's not a freak show. Now get your Siamese twin asses on that stage and you <laughs> nail Papa Don't Preach. <laughs> <laughs> Two crosses light up and the crowd cheers as Stavros Flatley are crucified in flames. <laughs> I'm 87, and I'm going to do keep you up with me boobs. Here we go. <laughs> hey. I'm like bloody Ronaldo. <laughs> Look at me go. OK, you're right. I don't really have any talent, but I'm kind of cute. I'm kind of an old sister, for God's sake. <laughs> what a hilarious singing dog Susan Boyle is. <laughs> <laughs> When you, when you said you were going to saw a woman in half, I thought you were a magician. <laughs> oh, my family aren't going to believe it when they see me on TV. They think I'm dead. <laughs> hello, I'm Susan Boyle, and I would like to say hello to my brother, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Susan Boyle is not related to me. <laughs> None of my relatives will ever manage to chisel their way out of that cellar. Ah. 
I am an escapologist. Today, I have escaped from Broadmoor. <laughs> Next on ITV4, it's ITV3's coverage of ITV2's making of documentary <laughs> about the coverage on ITV4. <laughs> Hello, I'm Billy Cock, and this is my partner, Brian Balls, and together we are Billy and Brian. <laughs> Behold, my magical racist cat. They come over here, they steal our bloody jobs. <laughs> I'm not having it. <laughs> that was a beautiful song, until you fucking sang it. <laughs> Things you wouldn't want to hear at work. Oh, oh, you've already given Michael his dosage. <laughs> it's not a photocopy, it's a shredder. And what have you done to your arse? <laughs> <laughs> so, you probably want to know how I got the nickname Dog Botherer. <laughs> Imagine that! My first day at work, and I appear to have slipped on a wet floor. Hmm. <laughs> I think I might be entitled to compensation. <laughs> Do you mind if I leave early? I've got to pick up the kids before their parents get there. <laughs> he's the CEO, he's the COO, and I'm head of the Agricultural Division, the CIEIO. to put down those football bits that you've been sewing, because I've heard that it's somebody's very special 11th birthday. <laughs> and we've got you a photo of a kick. <laughs> Panchawaho Chongwa! Panchawaho! Don't worry, this isn't the first operation I've done. Last time I got almost the whole way round before the buzzer went off. <laughs> We've run out of semi-skim, so I've topped your coffee up with breast milk. <laughs> what do you mean it's not your turn to make the coffee? This is fucking Starbucks. <laughs> Get off, your shit! <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> this air traffic control thing's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> I've always wanted to work in a library! <laughs> if only I could read! <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a property programme. Next, Cash in the Attic. Tennis player Pat Cash has a nervous breakdown <laughs> and decides to haunt his estranged family. <laughs> Today, we help Al McGrahi swap his one-bedroom cell for a Libyan place in the sun. <laughs> this couple's grand design is to turn an abattoir into an old folks' home <laughs> by changing the sign. <laughs> I'm Sarah Beanie, and I'm not pregnant. <laughs> can't decide between the two properties? Well, you're an MP. Why don't you claim for them both? <laughs> Thing is, I have actually heard that in a property programme in Scotland. <laughs> And remember, the prices of property can go down as well as plummet. <laughs> you know I said those ghastly beams, what on earth are they for? It turns out they were for holding your house up. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen, and I'm so posh I've actually got a swan for a penis. <laughs> Michael has always wanted to live in the country, and now he does. His business has collapsed, and he's living in a caravan in a field in Herefordshire. <laughs> Even on a collapsing market, you can still make money from a flat like this. We invited three different estate agents to come and value it, 
then harvested their organs. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Holmes Under the Hammer, where we attack Eamon Holmes with a hammer. <laughs> Next, on location, 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 Kirsty and Phil finally go at it like dogs. <laughs> and obviously this will all be included in the day. Oh, my God, he's back early. Quick, out of garden! <laughs> <laughs> well, we've visited five properties so far, but they've all had alarms, so no joy there. <laughs> Very spacious and with wonderful views, but this flat is in Dundee, so it might as well be built out of shit. <laughs> Rejected questions from this year's exams. What colour does a Smurf go when we choke it? <laughs> Translate the following into German. Two world wars and one world cup. Do-da, do-da. <laughs> How many pepperami big boys could you feed to Victoria Beckham through a tube before she became visible to the human eye? <laughs> <laughs> What is the name of the force that pulls objects towards the centre of the Earth? Is it A, gravity, or B, magic? <laughs> Katie Price is supposedly worth eight and a half million pounds and has got a thriving TV career. Explain. <laughs> If George Michael leaves at 8 o'clock for a five-mile drive, <laughs> when does he crash? <laughs> there are six lines of equal length. How long will Kerry Katona be in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> if a train is going at 70 miles per hour, how surprised would you be? <laughs> <laughs> what is amnesia? Is it A, memory loss, a, memory loss, <laughs> or four, the Battle of Hastings. <laughs> if Sally buys three oranges and two apples, how far south of Scotland is she? <laughs> Discuss the idea that Willy Wonka was a paedophile. <laughs> what is amnesia? Is it A, <laughs> memory loss? <laughs> Draw a diagram of the male genitalia. Please use the tracing paper provided. <laughs> what are most Canadians renowned for saying? A... Yeah. <laughs> English. Is standards declining? <laughs> Hitler, Pol Pot, Genghis Khan. Shag, marry or kill? <laughs> There's a wedding where Jane invites 20 guests and her partner Helen invites 40 guests. How angry is God? <laughs> <laughs> The next topic is unlikely things to hear on a TV business show. Well, the FTSE has had its best day since March. It went shopping, had lunch with friends and took in a show before shagging a complete stranger it met in a bar. <laughs> Our invention lets you know whether or not a girl fancies you. We call it beer. <laughs> OK, Dragons, I've developed a system that lets you get your own seat on the bus, and it involves talking slightly too loudly, then pitting yourself. <laughs> this morning, I am asking for half a million pounds, and with that, I will buy half a million lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Dragon. Oh, jeez, what the hell is that? That's Evan Davis, the host. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we may have lost some money promoting Michael Jackson 02, but let's face it, I've just signed a deal for the new Oasis tour. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, 
and welcome to Working Lunch, a show for people who are so good at business, they're sat at home watching the TV <laughs> in the middle of the fucking day. Dragons, I have three words for you. Reggae, reggae condoms. <laughs> the last task was easy, and yet you cocked it up. I only asked you to blow the bloody doors up. <laughs> this week, the Dragons meet a retired Nigerian brigadier with an offer that sounds too good to be true. <laughs> Today, there was a hard drop on the footsie and I got a bruisey on my handy wandy. <laughs> this week, the apprentices face their toughest task ever. Selling the shite Sir Alan actually makes. <laughs> Bad things to hear from a tour guide. <laughs> Please don't take photos of the natives, because they believe that you're taking part of their soul. Apart from that, enjoy Norwich. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name's Janet. I'm your holiday rep. And basically, I'll be giving out morning after pills like they were smarties. <laughs> I'm afraid this is the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> Venice is a most historical city, famous for its. Oh shit, it's flooded. Everyone get back on the bus. <laughs> a lot of you will be wondering why there are so many wonderful foreign treasures <laughs> on display here at the British Museum. And the answer is quite simple, really gun beat spear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, this castle does cater for the disabled. They bring you a sandwich while the rest of us go up the steps to look at it. <laughs> Let's have a little song, shall we? Da na 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 Coming up later on, we've got the topless donkey derby and who's got the funniest willy competition? Yes, it's going to be the best saga holiday you've ever had. <laughs> I know that a lot of you can't bear to leave Thailand, which is why I've hidden drugs randomly in your luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and as we enter the next room, we, I need you all to be very quiet, because we have technically broken in. <laughs> if you need anything, anything at all, <clears throat> I'll be under your bed. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look out the window on your left, you'll see the side of the road that we should be driving on. <laughs> of course, you have to respect local customs. On the right-hand side, you'll see a woman being bumped at the stake. <laughs> and on the left, Dundee Town Hall. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the deepest, darkest bit of the caves. And unless you give me £20 each, it's where you're staying. <laughs> And uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, the East Wing was built in the year Dougie is a homo. <laughs> uh, we're now leaving the green zone. Pop on your flak jackets. This is the real Baghdad. <laughs> An adult and two children is ten pounds. But enough about my trip to Cambodia. <laughs> <laughs> Our next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a breakfast show. If the woman I picked up last night is watching, help yourself to cereal, but get out of the flat by the time I get home. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for thought for the day. Hmm. <laughs> that was a good one. <clears throat> You're listening to Six Music. Yes, you. Just you. <laughs> Welcome to Travel Report. We've got a text here from Dave on the M5 who says, Ha, 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 every morning you leave for work, I pop round and shag your wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so if you're trying to get in via Junction 2, stop it. It's against nature and the Bible says no. <laughs> we speak to Fern Breton about having her stomach stapled, this time to an enormous chocolate cake. 
Uh, in other traffic news, if you're on the M11 headed towards Middlesbrough, I would turn around because it's a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! I'm doing a survey into the effect of replacing milk on your Weetabix with Red Bull! <laughs> And we can see there's been an accident northbound on the M1, and it is a beauty! <laughs> Welcome to Radio Tourette, you shit monkeys! <laughs> you may think of it as a breakfast show. I had mine at 4 bloody 30! <laughs> Later, Vanessa Feltz will be joining me on the city, and I'll be bouncing through the fucking ceiling. <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear at a party conference. Blackpool's nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Unlike other party leaders I could mention, I am not a slave to the auto queue. Smile, pause, applause. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please welcome the man who's made the Conservatives an electable force again? Gordon Brown! <laughs> I'm going to turn my back for one minute and I want whoever stole David Blunkett's dog to put it back. <laughs> the delegates were so impressed by Ming Campbell's speech that they gave him a ten-minute standing cremation. <laughs> uh, kiss the baby. No, I'd better not. It might set my tag off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I must say, on this issue, <coughs> I'm with Al-Qaeda. <laughs> so, for Scottish independence and cheaper parking, vote S-N-C-P. <laughs> In an attempt to be more like Barack Obama, Gordon Brown has sensationally blacked up. And I do believe we are the only party who are going to do anything about the amount of unemployed dwarves in this country. In fact, I saw one just outside holding a sign that said, no job, too small. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to open this BNP conference with a prayer, so if you'd all like to turn towards Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a history documentary. Now follows a documentary about the Queen Mother, which contains nudity and strong language from the start. <laughs> and it was here, at this exact spot, that faced with 30,000 baying Frenchmen, that Henry V shat himself. <laughs> On the first day of the Battle of the Somme, over 60,000 documentaries were commissioned. <laughs> <clears throat> I was in the parachute regiment. I was dropped over occupied territory. <laughs> 4,000 feet. 3,000. 2,000. I pulled the cord. <clears throat> My cagoule tightened. <laughs> 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 Two world wars and one world cup. <laughs> Doodah. <laughs> and it was actually here in this very tower that the princes were slaughtered. Uh, William on Red Bull and vodka and. Fifteen forty seven. Nostradamus predicts the rock group the Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> he also predicts a riot. <laughs> <laughs> on one side of battle stood William of Orange. On the other side, Charles of O2 and Richard of Vodafone. <laughs> the final outcome of the Second World War has changed the world forever. So, if you don't want to know the result, <laughs> look away now. <laughs> Next, Eva Braun. The inventor of the lady shave. <laughs> so it was my job to assassinate Himmler. So I stood behind the tree and waited for his car to come round the corner. And then I leapt out and I said, 
boom. Sometimes all we had was the element of surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Napoleon was imprisoned in St. Helena, which was extremely uncomfortable for her. Her hat was pointy, <laughs> and he never took his boots off. <laughs> <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster. Fact or fiction? Fiction. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> of course, during the war, I was brought up in Dorset. None of us expected the surprise Japanese attack on Pool Harbour. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely things to hear on Crime Watch. But before we see tonight's crime, <laughs> let's meet the judges. <laughs> <clears throat> Police say they are looking for a black man in his 20s and that they always will be. <laughs> Do you recognise this man? Thought not. It's Nick Clegg. <laughs> they say criminals always return to the scene of a crime, which is why we've probably got so many Australians over here. <laughs> Coming up next week, we'll be trying to solve the murders of the people who phoned up giving information on criminals this week. <laughs> Today, we're looking at identity theft. I'm... <laughs> All the victims are deaf, dumb or blind. These are senseless killings. <laughs> Baffled police are appealing for help. Do you know where Wally is? <laughs> so, uh... If you're being interrogated by the police and they're recording the interview, just make sure that every so often you go... Ow! <laughs> Tonight, the great train robbery. London to Glasgow, £235 return. <laughs> Tonight, we're looking for the man who keeps on burgling my home every time I present this programme. <laughs> Allow and work with a crime watch. I'm your host, Ray Winson. Leave it, you slag! <laughs> Don't go camping in the countryside. We notice that whenever the police find a body, it's always in a tent. <laughs> Hello, I'm Nick Ross, and tonight I'm asking, who stole my fucking job? <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear in a TV election debate. The truth. <laughs> <laughs> Labour, ready! Tories, ready! <laughs> Bring on the wall! <laughs> I think of this studio as a second home, which is why I'm claiming expenses for it. <laughs> <laughs> and the lines have closed. Gordon, it could be you. David, <laughs> it could be you. Nick, it's not going to be <laughs> you. <laughs> we in the Tory party are going to give the north of England a huge boost and then all the people can come out and lick the chocolate off it. <laughs> if you're elected, you'll raise taxes. If your mum's elected, she will. <laughs> <laughs> it's me who got you into this mess, and it's him that will get you out of it. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gordon, you've scored no points. <laughs> I'm really very, very proud of my working-class roots. Uh, when I was growing up, we only had an outside toilet. Eventually, we got enough money to buy a house. <laughs> Cheryl! Tonight, you're going to be mentoring the Lib Dems. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let me know, Pick. What's your real name? <laughs> How will we shorten waiting lists? Simple. By letting the weak die. <laughs> <laughs> I am almost certain that was a floating voter. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely things to hear at an award ceremony. Our next award is for most inaccurate weather forecast of the year. Let's look at the 9,000 nominees. <laughs> Welcome to the Islamic Awards for Acting, or as we call them, the Moscas. <laughs> Oh, well, God, so many people to thank. Um, where to begin? Uh, obvious one, I suppose, Hitler. Uh, what? 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 <laughs> and the award for best envelope glue goes to... <laughs> <laughs> now, Teacher of the Year, quieten down. It's your own time you're wasting. <laughs> Time now for us to celebrate some of the stars of show business who sadly are still with us. <laughs> I'll just open the envelope. Uh, oh, it's full of gold. <laughs> <laughs> and the award for special effects goes to the team behind Gordon Brown's smile. And now we're going to watch a film showing some of the people that we've lost this year, including two you didn't even know were dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd bang that, I'd bang that, wouldn't bang that, I'd bang that. <laughs> anyway, the award for best actress goes to... <laughs> Welcome to the Accident at Work Awards. <laughs> Winner of the Suicide Bomber of the Year. I'm afraid they couldn't be with us tonight. <laughs> and the winner of the best scientist in physics is. There's no ramp, Stephen Hawkins, it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> the next category is things you wouldn't want to hear on a cruise. This is your captain speaking. Welcome to Somali Cruising. <laughs> We've heard reports of an iceberg, but don't worry, no ship has ever been sunk by a lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Ryanair Cruises. The following safety announcement is incredibly vital if you want to stay alive. And if you'd like to hear that, that'll be an extra five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, we very rarely get any injuries from people playing quoits. You were just unlucky to be sunbathing naked with an erection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we were on this last year when it sunk. <laughs> if you look to your left, there's a man-eating squid. After that, he's having chips. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to apologise for the rocking of this boat but we are currently being humped by a whale. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for coming to the show. I've got to be honest, it's been a while since I've sung this one. Do you want to be in my gang, my gang? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Rita's Erotic Ping Pong Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Two fat ladies, eh, <laughs> dude? All the threes, 33. <laughs> Oh, some hobnobs. <laughs> For those of you gathering on the car deck, I said we would soon be docking, not dogging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a really old husband with money. How's your heart? <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm in the cabin next to yours. Yeah. Could you be a bit noisy when you're having sex? <laughs> <laughs> 
There appears to have been an incident in the swimming pool. If a Mr Barrymore could contact the captain... <laughs> On likely things to read in a Valentine's Day card. I may be dyslexic, but that doesn't mean I don't vol you. <laughs> <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. I've got something nasty, and now so do you. <laughs> You make me so hot, I can't stop thinking about you. Lots of love, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day on this 24th of February. Love, Royal Mail. <laughs> <laughs> You're the perfect person for me. Pissed and gagging for it. <laughs> Be my Valentine or die in a well. I love your eyes, I love your nose, I love your smell. Why must you be a Labrador? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to go through this shit every year? <laughs> you make my pants hot. Yours, Omar Farouk Abdul Mutalab. <laughs> My darling wife. Roses are red, violets are blue. Valentine's Day is consumerist bullshit. Now, haven't you got some ironing to do? <laughs> Roses are red, poppies are red, the grass is all red. Shit, the garden's on fire! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit of a man for the ladies. Doesn't matter how clearly the gents are signposted. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you like no other. But never again les up with my mother. <laughs> Life with me, baby, is like a roller coaster. It's got a weight restriction. <laughs> <laughs> there are just three words I want to say. Dream on, bitch. <laughs> OK, next up it is. <laughs> on Life with to hear in a science programme. 1643. The cold air balloon is invented. <laughs> but it doesn't really take off. <laughs> For Einstein, it was easy to choose a DJ name. He would be MC Squared. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Dr Gillian McKeith, and today I'll be sifting through your poop. Why? Because I was never hugged as a child. <laughs> now on five, crop circles, myth or bollocks? <laughs> Next, to demonstrate chaos theory, we've locked Boris Johnson in a room with an aardvark and some magic mushrooms. <laughs> I was the man who discovered DNA. I wasn't going to call it that, but I was giving a lecture to the Royal Society, and I said, gentlemen, I believe I've discovered the genetic fingerprint of all human life. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> I've been Richard Dawkins. Good night, and God bless. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Thanks to carbon dating, this skeleton is now going out with a short-sighted geology student who likes thin people that don't talk much. <laughs> 1891. Sir Alexander Graham Benn receives the first wrong number telephone call. <laughs> he realised that this equation was going to take him absolutely years. So he switched to a media studies course, which was a piece of piss. <laughs> I did have here a pie chart to demonstrate obesity. <laughs> Apart from the human, the only animal to enjoy having sex is a dolphin. I had to shag a lot of animals to find that out. <laughs> I'm a meerkat, she's not lying. <laughs> Tonight we'll be discussing molecular science. Our guests are Sir Patrick Moore, Robert Winston and Dappy off of N-dubs. 
<laughs> With their tiny arms, could the T-Rex self-pleasure? Let's find out in another edition of Wanking with Dinosaurs. <laughs> Unlikely things to get through your letterbox. Royal Mail parcel delivery. We called, you were in, so we ran away before you could answer. <laughs> Just three pounds a month will save last year's X Factor winner from starving. <laughs> Do you know what's in your attic? It's me, I've been there since Christmas. <laughs> Have you seen this dog? No, maybe your windows are too dirty. Oh, heaven, the window cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> are you looking for a dog walking service? Then call Ace Kebabs on 318 318. Computer problems? Let me come round and swear at it. <laughs> Why has your girlfriend stopped changing near the window? Love, Dad. <laughs> Pizza. Buy one, pay full price. <laughs> <laughs> How's my driving? Call 0800 crashed into your house. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dear Miss Winehouse, congratulations on turning 100. Best wishes, the Queen. <laughs> Need a room clearing? Call me. I'll come round and fart in it. <laughs> Looking for an undertaker? Why not call Ace Kebabs <laughs> on 318 <laughs> Gardening service, middle of the night a speciality. Call Rose West on Broadmoor. <laughs> too, uh, too soon, too soon. <laughs> Hello, my name's Ashley Cole. Here's a picture of me naked. <laughs> Would you recognise a fake ID? No? Great, I'll be back in ten minutes. <laughs> the Taj Mahal Indian restaurant. Formerly Ace Kebabs. <laughs> Open your letterbox. It's me. <laughs> I'll get through one day. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things you wouldn't hear at the Winter Olympics. And here are the British ice dance pair, Heather Mills and John Sargent. <laughs> and now, over to Bob Sled. Bob, how's the curling? <laughs> <laughs> and while we wait for them to get set up there, we'll just pan the camera around. There's just a beautiful scenery. Oh, look, there's a herd of moose. Oh, no, that's the uh, Romanian women's ice hockey team. <laughs> This is the big hill. Oh, that's long! That's very long! He's gonna wish he'd done his flies up. <laughs> it's 1 a.m. in the UK. You're watching the women's figure skating. Why not just bite the bullet and turn to Television X for the 10 minute preview? <laughs> 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 and Britain comes away with two gold, two silver. And a bronze. Well, that'll teach the Austrians a lesson for leaving their locker open. <laughs> and with conditions here reaching a bitter minus 20 degrees centigrade, the British hopeful from Newcastle has put on a second string vest. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching the women's curling. Men's curling? Women's. You're watching the curling. <laughs> No one has more experience on the ice than him. What a wonderful games it's been so far for Pingu. <laughs> <laughs> and the conditions are perfect here, aren't they, John? Yes, they are, Bob. I haven't seen this much white powder since that stag weekend at the hotel in my <laughs> Oh, and that's what ice hockey is all about. A man having his head repeatedly smashed into a glass wall. <laughs> <laughs>
The ski jump will start as soon as the British skier takes his hand off the side and stops crying. <laughs> and there, the skier surprisingly stopped off halfway down for a mulled wine and a shit. <laughs> On likely things to read in a political memoir. <laughs> so we were playing truth or dare, and I didn't want to tell the truth. So I shagged Edwina Curry. <laughs> <laughs> Big Ben struck 12 and stopped. Thank God, my buttocks were on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd press the button that summoned the tea lady. Imagine my surprise when it turned out I bombed Russia. <laughs> I think the greatest thing about m meeting the Queen was listening to him singing Candle in the Wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say what you like about Robert Mugabe, but that moustache makes all the difference to foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> I suspected that John Prescott was having an affair when the four legs of his desk came through the ceiling above me. <laughs> I was actually at college with Saddam Hussein. We were at Sussex together doing chemistry and combined inhumanities. <laughs> at the start, there were three women in the cabinet, five in the cellar and two under the patio. <laughs> Deciding to go to war was one of the tensest games of eeny, meeny, miny, mo I have ever played. <laughs> We'd sometimes break up boring cabinet meetings by convincing David Blunkett he was black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when we got into Bosnia, the first thing we did was get the United Nations troops <laughs> setting up trestle tables with plates of cheese straws and sausage rolls. But it turns out we were supposed to provide a buffer, not a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> John Prescott, an autobiography, an autobri a book by me. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, you bastard, he said. No one fucks with Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is things you wouldn't hear in a medical documentary. I know you're a teenage mother, but nobody will patronise you here. Come through to the slag ward. <laughs> Next, he was put in a cat scanner. Unfortunately, the cat was still in it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Nick Griffin comes round after the face transplant, and that's not the colour he was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, cough and cough again. OK, yeah, I've got the diagnosis. Got a cough. <laughs> Eventually, doctors had to break his leg in six places. It was the only way to stop him running round the ward, the little tosser. 34% <laughs> of people in this country have irritable bowel... Se oh, sorry. <laughs> what this attractive patient doesn't realise is Dr Singh was struck off years ago. <laughs> Brian is 75 stone. He hasn't left the house for three years. What a fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> After months of tests, doctors finally discovered what had caused his blindness. He'd been masturbating too much. <laughs> Today we're attempting a slightly difficult operation. What we're hoping to do is remove the Adam's apple with a pair of tweezers without the patient's nose flashing red. <laughs> Tara removes her top to reveal a hideous skin infection. Look away now if you're eating Rice Krispies. <laughs> <laughs> the Siamese twins were joined in the most embarrassing place imaginable and known by friends as the skipping rope. <laughs> I 
exactly lines you hear in a kid's film. Oi, Shrek! Have you been upsetting Colleen again by shagging those prostitutes? <laughs> Garfield, what are you doing in that bin? <laughs> E.T., I'm pregnant. <laughs> Where's Nemo? Look inside the batter. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I'll just put my clothes back on. I thought you said chitty chitty gangbang. <laughs> Mr. Von Trapp, I'm here from the council. We've had complaints about some terrible singing coming from your <laughs> house. <laughs> so, he asked all five of you if you would like to look round his chocolate factory, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Mary Poppins, I arrest you on suspicion of supercalifragilistic sex trafficking. <laughs> King of the Swingers, nice to meet you. I'm King of the Doggers. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Nanny McPhee, that was not the Big Bang I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I am Bambi, son of a murdered mother, husband of an endangered dog. I will have my vengeance in this life, <laughs> OK, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear in a cookery show. Mm. No, no, that's definitely a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I brought along chicken tonight, but I'm going to have it tomorrow. <laughs> Smash the system. <laughs> so, finally, just pour on the milk, and there you have it. Cereal. <laughs> And remember, you must eat the brain to get their power. <laughs> a lot of people recommend washing your hands after handling raw meat, but it's just as easy to let a dog lick them or to wipe them <laughs> on a relative. <laughs> Golden, Golden, relax. We're doing a bit of dinner, mate. <laughs> You're not sorting out in the Middle East, dear. <laughs> So, just boil for 15 minutes, and if there's still life in her, she's a witch. <laughs> Welcome to It's Late and There's Not Much Left in the Fridge. Today, we're going to be making onion double cream banana pasta ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the unique flavour of the sausages is from a recipe from my missing... my wife. <laughs> So, if you want to give your bar snacks that genuine pub feeling, why not sprinkle them with urine? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jamie Oliver, and in my new series, I'm going to be travelling the length and breadth of the UK in a VW camper. Welcome to Coco Van. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, these fried insect legs really are the bee's knees. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be making prune and sweet corn chickpea couscous, cos I like to give my bowels a challenge. <laughs> Next, the ginger pudding. Anthony Worrell Thompson, what are you going to be cooking for us tonight? <laughs> so, I've been beating away for half an hour. But I'm just lonely. Let's get on with the cooking. Unlikely things to hear on a news programme. Behind me, a man lies dead. That's what happens if you pull faces in the background <laughs> when I'm doing a piece to camera. This is BBC Three's News in 15 Seconds. Floods, recession, Lib Dems, Wayne Rooney. <laughs> 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 
<coughs> Medical news, Justin. Pioneering x-rays have proven that Nick Clegg has a spine. <laughs> <laughs> Our tape of Big Ben is broken. Bong. <laughs> This is Fox News. Ow. <laughs> Three Lockerbie bomber Ado Bassa Al McGrahi has died. <laughs> Are you there? No, there's no one there. Well, we hope to talk to Michael Jackson later. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, we'll be finding how the Queen arrived in Australia, but first. <laughs> Finally, economic news. We're fucked. Good night. <laughs> there is still an embargo on revealing the footballer at the centre of this sex case. This is Brian Henderson. Outside John Terry's house. <laughs> so <laughs> Protesters set fire to cars and blocked the carriageway for several hours in protest over something or other, bloody French. <laughs> City news now. London is dangerous, York is old, and Bristol is a bit weird. <laughs> the next topic, please. Unlikely things to hear on a train. Uh, this is the Virgin train service to Edinburgh. If you're not a virgin, would you please get off at Hemel Hempstead? <laughs> <laughs> we would like to apologise for the bumpy ride as we entered the last station. This is due to some selfish bastard throwing himself <laughs> under the train. We are now arriving in Sheffield. Could all passengers in first class please pull back your window blinds and take a look at the real world? <laughs> uh, we'd like to apologise for the toilet being out of order for the entire journey, as Ricky Hatton is in it. <laughs> uh, due to staff shortages, I am unable to finish this announce. <laughs> Food is now available because the buffet car is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> we have now arrived into Birmingham New Street. We are pleased to inform any passengers wishing to change for Wolverhampton that there's a JD Sports opposite the station. <laughs> Excuse me, do you have any more of those sandwiches? They're delicious. <laughs> Hmm. I wonder whether I should take my personal belongings with me when I leave this train. <laughs> if only there was an announcement that could possibly help me. <laughs> uh, we apologise for the delay to this service. This was caused by points failure at Make Something Up. train speaking. <laughs> I know we're running a bit late, but don't worry, I know a shortcut. <laughs> Could the passenger causing a disturbance in the quiet coach please settle down and stop shouting about your heart medicine? <laughs> Would the driver please contact the guard? <laughs> we have no idea where you are. <clears throat> this is the driver contacting the guard. <laughs> where am I? <laughs> Lines you wouldn't hear in a TV detective show. The suspect has got a gun, but it's OK. Gaz has arrived and he's brought chicken and a fishing rod. 
I'm not doing it. This is a midwinter murder. It's freezing. It's not in the contract. <laughs> And as you can see from the samples we've taken that we've scraped from under her fingernails, she was manky. <laughs> he were a policeman that got hit by a car and thought that he'd woken up in 1970. It were wrong. It were present day. This is CSI Hull. <laughs> Sergeant, if you look closely, there are semen stains all over these bed sheets. Let's book into the Holiday Inn instead. <laughs> <clears throat> Poirot, you've done it again. You've bored me shitless for the last two hours. <laughs> so that's it. At the end of a three-month investigation, that is it. It's Colonel Mustard in the living room with a lead pipe. <laughs> Inspector, has anyone ever said that you look an awful lot like David Jason from Only Fools and Horses? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Miss Markle, we've had the lab results back, and it's very interesting. Actually, it's thrush. <laughs> <laughs> he fits the profile. This is going to be a really boring episode of Hole in the Wall. You're probably wondering why I've asked you all to gather here in the library. Sorry? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> probably wondering why I've asked you to gather in the library. Uh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> it's the TV presenter Noel Edmonds. Have you any idea why he was killed? It's the TV presenter Noel Edmonds. <laughs> Ken Stott is Detective Inspector David Sod in Sod's Law. <laughs> well, we know now who's responsible for the killing. It's society, yeah? Yeah, you want to think about that, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> the body is that of Eamon Holmes. We may need a little more chalk. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear from a sports commentator. So, just 80 metres to go and the building of this running track will be finished. <laughs> and Ricky Hatton there, bleeding heavily from the nose. This boy really knows how to party. <laughs> And we're just getting the news that Usain Bolt's uh, ankle isn't actually sprained, it's broken. So the only thing to do is to collect some of his sperm and then shoot him in the head. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Sky Sports, or if you're watching Sky Sports 3D... Hello and welcome! <laughs> <laughs> ah, the smack of leather on Willow as Sue Barker walks into a tree. <laughs> No! 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 The race hasn't started yet. <laughs> I've just got a bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> All of the drivers have their own little good luck rituals. This one's brought a tiny good luck troll. Oh, no, that's Bernie Eccleston. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll have to see what the referee gets out. I don't think any of us were expecting <laughs> that. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Man United team have turned up with the wrong kit, so today they're going to have to play in their pants. <laughs> he's got his wood out and he's in a nasty bit of rough. He needs to get to the golf course as quickly as he can. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I have to say, I do agree with the crowd. The referee is a wanker. <laughs> Welcome to Delhi for the shit pit. Sorry, the uh, shots put. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was right first time. <laughs> uh, you join me for the men's discus final. Women's? That's no woman. <laughs> Mm. 
And as the derby winner is led out by his jockey, the sexual tension is almost unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> So, with one over to go, this next delivery could change everything. And it has. It's a no ball. I've won £400,000. <laughs> and I'm off to the airport. <laughs> oh, and that's a beautiful shot there on the black. I really should remember these boxers' names. <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear at a school assembly. OK, today we're going to have a special outing. So, Miss Williams, if you'd like to tell everybody why you're a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome a new member of staff today. He has no arms and no legs and no body, and we will call him the head. <laughs> Would whoever's milkshake is bringing all the boys to the yard please stop it? <laughs> I'm sorry to keep you waiting, boys and girls. I've just had a shit the size of a baby seal. <laughs> if you are found in possession of cocaine, you will be given a hundred lines. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and today in the after-school club, uh, we're going to be using paper mache to make a mother that actually loves you enough to pick you up at three o'clock. <laughs> I'm delighted to say that during the summer holidays, Mr. Wang married Miss Kerr. <laughs> <laughs> His nickname will remain the same. <laughs> A wise man once said, boys and girls, that if you try your hardest, you can fulfil your dreams. Generally, that's true. Not for you, though, Tom. You can't read. So... <laughs> And today, everyone, we have a new boy. Now, for some reason, whatever reason, he's been to a lot of schools. So be kind to him. Will you please make your way to the front, Richard Poo Willy? <laughs> <laughs> a word about registers. Uh, most of the staff are on one. <laughs> so that is how you put on a condom. <laughs> But, sir, shouldn't you have used a cucumber? <laughs> Not with that E. coli kicking around. <laughs> sorry, sorry I'm late. I just had a bit of a run-in with an interactive whiteboard. <laughs> it told me to fuck off. <laughs> I've had all your mums. <laughs> OK. The next topic is on Life of Things to Hear on a TV talent show. Tonight, I'm going to be climbing a sip ladder. <laughs> You're right. I can't sing. Thanks. <laughs> I'd like to dedicate this song to a friend of mine who was run over last week and is in hospital. The wheels of the bus go round and round and round and round. I've got an ability that no one on this planet has. That's Ant, that's Deck. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Elvis was in the building. You're fat and there's a stench of death. <laughs> Oh, Peter, it's not what everyone would call entertainment, but you are one hell of an assassin. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd hit the high notes really, really well. It'll be interesting to see if you can still do that when I haven't got your nuts in a clamp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's my double act partner? Oh, he's, he's in here. <laughs> Feeling. <laughs> Nothing more than <laughs> feelings. <laughs> Crying to pass. <laughs> when you said you were going to ride a donkey. <laughs> yes, I, I have been on the show before. I was once trapped in somebody else's underpants going. <laughs> 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 
Feeling. <laughs> that was an exceptional performance, and the way that you have overcome your blindness is truly inspirational. But this is a chip shop, the X Factor audition. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest with you, I think you're all terrible, okay? All of you, you're completely dreadful. I don't know what you're doing. Especially you, Hasselhoff. What have you done since me, watch? <laughs> and as well as that, I can unzip the top of my head. It's where I keep my pyjamas. <laughs> I oh, know you said you were a Gary Glitter tribute act, but we weren't expecting you to do that. <laughs> on likely things to hear on a history documentary. The Russians had Lemsip. The Americans had Night Nurse. This was the Cold War. <laughs> <clears throat> and it was in this humble florist that the War of the Roses began. <laughs> Guy Fawkes' bid to blow up the Houses of Parliament failed when he realised his body was made of jumpers and his head was an old football. <laughs> Tonight on Bruce Forsyth's History of Britain, Bo de Sia, de Sia Bo! <laughs> <laughs> Horatio Nelson, one arm, one eye. A tragic example of what can happen if you fall asleep and someone finds your organ donor card. <laughs> Welcome to Biggest Historical Boobs with me, Katie Price. <laughs> Tonight, I intend to find out exactly what did happen to Hitler's other ball. And my search <laughs> begins right here in the Albert Hall. <laughs> And on Time Team tonight, we're in Stratford on Avon, where we've uncovered loads of monkey skeletons and some typewriters. <laughs> when Hitler started writing Mein Kampf, he intended it to be a light hearted romp called Carry On Kampfing. <laughs> John F. Kennedy, Indira Gandhi, John Lennon, if history teaches us anything, it's that if you don't want your child assassinated, don't name them after an airport. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I'm not interested in all this old nonsense, really, but um, <laughs> since the end of Blackadder, the work's been fairly hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to believe that this crumbling old ruin presented Weakest Link for as long as she did. <laughs> Of course, the Bronze Age was the third best age in history. <laughs> and now the documentary that every Channel 5 commissioner has dreamt of. Did Hitler sink the Titanic? <laughs> We've been digging in this field in Hampshire for three weeks and we found this one piece of crockery which tells us we desperately need to get laid. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear over a tannoy. We apologise to customers who have recently alighted at Northampton. I opened the wrong doors. <laughs> <laughs> Could all the people shopping here at Hasda please accept that you are piss poor? <laughs> <laughs> Clean up required in the magazine aisle between <laughs> loaded and nuts. <laughs> Would the parents of the lost child please pick him up from the meeting point? Madonna is trying to buy him. <laughs> I'd like to remind customers that our special offer this week is 100% off German bean sprouts. <laughs> if you would like to upgrade to first class, then you should have worked harder at school and got a better job. <laughs> Could the small boy holding the owl stop running at the wall between platforms nine and ten? <laughs> Uh, 
Will the man on pump number four please remove the nozzle from the backside of the man on pump number six? Of the Ford Fiesta 1100 in the car park with the tinted windows and the go faster stripes. Sort your life out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, I can't remember what the code is. Uh, uh, what, what, um, would, would Mr. Fire please report? <laughs> please report to the kitchen. That's Mr. Out of Control Fire. Please report to the kitchen before it's too late. I don't want to start a panic. <laughs> train now approaching platforms three, four and five is the derailed <laughs> train from Swansea. <laughs> Would the owners of a black Jaguar please move it as it's attacking the customers? <laughs> this is your captain speaking. You can now turn on your mobile phones as you'll need to text your loved ones goodbye <laughs> as we plummet into the sea. Lines from a superhero film. <laughs> Worry not, procrastination man is here. <laughs> Where is everybody? What's with all the blood? <laughs> <laughs> Catwoman, what did I tell you about not shitting in next door's garden? <laughs> I am big society man. I could do it for you, but I'd much rather you did it yourself. <laughs> to meet a new breed of sex change superhero in the X-Men. <laughs> yes, I do believe a man can fly, but only if he's carrying under 100 mils. <laughs> I am parking review man. <laughs> Where's my check? <laughs> Wow, Iron Man, how did you get all the creases out? <laughs> uh, just call the police. <laughs> Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Well, if you don't know that, what the hell are you doing in air traffic control? <laughs> What use is a spider's web against me, Duster Man and Hoover Boy? <laughs> Hello, I'm Batman Begins! <laughs> I'm sexist, I'm racist and I drive like an arsehole. I am White Van Man. <laughs> what do, I, do I... should I do...? Yeah, 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 do yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, This is part of it! Oh, shit. <laughs> Okay, the next topic is... Unlikely things for a continuity announcer to say. And now to upset children everywhere, it's Peppa Pig. In pepper sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh, God. And Nigella will be back at the same time next week. <laughs> Up next, Ryan Giggs appears on Footballers' Wives. <laughs> next up on Channel 4, live from Switzerland, it's Come Die With Me. <laughs> and now for a special episode of Planet Earth, where six chimpanzees will watch David Attenborough have sex. <laughs> Now is the time I have to be extremely careful, cos the next programme is about Roald Dahl, genius behind Willy Wanker's truck bollocks. <laughs> next on the History Channel, World War II in colour. Look away if you don't want to know how it ends. <laughs> Just to clear up some confusion for our regular viewers, ITV2 plus one is not the same as ITV3. <laughs> uh, 
First, though, there's a serial killer on the loose. In Balamori. <laughs> if you've been affected by some of the issues in EastEnders, they must have been acting it better than they usually do. <laughs> And now, Gordon Ramsay's kitchen nightmares for the hard of hearing. <laughs> You're watching the Dignitas channel. For God's sake, don't press the red button. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, it's Bargain Hunt, which is also rhyming slang for the bloke who presents it. <laughs> Right now, Kate Humble's in the lambing shed. Oh. <laughs> Unlikely agony aunt letters. Dear Deirdre, I have recently become obsessed with a woman and begun stalking her. Look out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> My partner won't give me oral sex, which is really annoying, because that's the only reason I formed the coalition with him in the first place. <laughs> My wife says, I, I don't feel anything, uh, which is a problem. And there was something else. Oh, yes. I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 26, my girlfriend's 36. Is 10 years too big an age gap? Cos her daughter's 16, she's a right little soul. <laughs> I have recently met a woman who makes me feel young again. She's 167. <laughs> Dear Deirdre, I'm from Nigeria, and I'm fed up of Mickey Flanagan mocking my accent. <laughs> Dear Auntie, I'm a very, very nervous person, and sudden noises really startle me. In fact, even if I hear a buzzer, a bit of wee comes out. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> My mates are all getting into drugs, but I don't know what to do. Should I charge the mates rates or just normal prices? <laughs> Dear Deirdre, I am a control freak. What should I do? I'll tell you what I should do. <laughs> I am 96, but I'm convinced that young women fancy me. Do I have penile dementia? <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to come and see you for a long time, but I can't get out of the chair! I am a man trapped inside the body of a woman. Could you tell us, please, how to get out of position 43 of the Kama Sutra? <laughs> I work in the public sector and I'm really, really, really worried about my pension! <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is unlikely things to hear at Wimbledon. <laughs> well, at two sets down, let's see what he's got in his locker. He's not going to be there for about 20 minutes. I've got a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> Serena Williams has been seeded. You've got to admire the bravery of that bloke. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sue Barker. You may remember my father, Chew Barker. <laughs> They say that the All England Club is a bit behind the times, and that's why this small boy has just had his hand chopped off for stealing a strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> I am a tennis umpire and gay, and it wasn't easy to come out! <laughs> <laughs> what? A fantastic slice, but I do think the All England Club will insist she wears knickers again next year. <laughs> Fuck off, Tim! <laughs> well, how 
did the umpire get up there? I think he must have used a set bladder. <laughs> Of course, this year, the British players play a lot better. If we look at this graph, we see huge biceps and an angry... Sorry, Steffi, wrong graph. <laughs> <laughs> and for any of our Scottish viewers, what you can see there in that glass of Pims is fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Murray here. I'm, I'm Andy Murray not being able to make it here today, uh, but we do have his cab driver on the other line. Can you tell us what's occurred? <laughs> I can't get out of the cab! <laughs> and the mound has taken a real pounding in the last fortnight. <laughs> England club are fine with it as long as it doesn't affect a tennis. <laughs> Unlikely questions from this year's exams. <laughs> Discuss the metaphysical meaning of the following poem. My friend Billy has a ten-foot willy. <laughs> Would you like this exam to be A, multiple choice, or not? The Bronte sisters. Shag, marry, push off a cliff. <laughs> Discuss the following. The Nazis got all their ideas from the History Channel. <laughs> who was the chap in the A team who would not go on the aeroplane? Was it A, B or B, A? <laughs> Bank loses £60 billion in a six month period using numbers that you've plucked out of thin air, <laughs> work out what the chief executive's bonus will be. <laughs> Napoleon, a small man or a long way away? <laughs> Quantify n in terms of q when q is a positive integer that dissects a parabolic curve. How's your lucky pencil case now? <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of that round thing that they throw in the Olympics? Discuss. <laughs> uh. Poetry. Is it all a bit gay? <laughs> <laughs> Draw a diagram of the genitalia of the male elephant. Use all 30 sheets of paper for... <laughs> <laughs> Biology. Without singing, what is the knee bone connected to? <laughs> <laughs> Explain the use of juxtaposition in Macbeth. Alternatively, write down everything you know about Macbeth in a blind panic cos you've got no idea what the word juxtaposition is. <laughs> Drama. Question one. What was it that first made you want to become a waiter? <laughs> <laughs> what is your pin number? <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to read on a motorway sign. For Middlesbrough, take the exit, mark hell, and then lose the will to live. <laughs> Accident. You were one. Love, Mum and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> when lights flash, dogging is about to start. <laughs> There may be trouble ahead. Prepare to face music and dance. <laughs> you are now 200 metres beyond the junction that your piece of shit sat-nav is telling you you're approaching now. <laughs> for those of you looking for more safety tips, text now. <laughs> Beware, giant scissors coming towards you along the dotted lines. <laughs> Turn on lights in tunnel. They're on the right, just above the entrance. <laughs> <laughs> 200 
turn off the sat nav. Use the force, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> The North, where the men are real men, and so are quite a lot of the women. <laughs> if you can taste this sign, it means you've crashed into it. <laughs> Throw banana skin behind car now. Super Mario and Diddy Kong approaching from rear. <laughs> There was a young man from Preston who tried to drive to Heston. The sign wouldn't rhyme and he ploughed into the back of a juggernaut. <laughs> Pick us up a pint of milk tail, thanks, Trace. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely lines from children's books. Yes, it is sad. I used to be on Top Gear, said, <laughs> said Stick of the Dump. Jack, do you, uh, do you have any more of those beans? <laughs> a string fellow? What's a string fellow? A string fellow? Why didn't you know it has tanned leather skin and a massive libido and bad 80s hair and a grin like a pedo? <laughs> this little piggy went to market and this little piggy stayed at home and this little piggy went <coughs> <coughs> and died horribly of swine flu. <laughs> Let's learn the alphabet. A is for adopted, like you. <laughs> B is for basmati. <laughs> <clears throat> and as Eeyore put the noose around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think you should shave, Bilbo, said Frodo. <laughs> Those feet need waxing. <laughs> yes, yes, Grandma, what a big TV screen you got, <laughs> said Little Red Riding Hoodie. <laughs> Who's been sleeping in my bed? said Daddy Bear. Well, said Mummy Bear, it's been your brother Ryan, and he's a much better shag than you are. I want to go to Tottenham, said Max. That's where the wild things are. <laughs> the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, or as we like to call them, the sugar babes. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time in a faraway land, there was a handsome young prince named Dara. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Where's Gaddafi? <laughs> <laughs> the railway children gesticulated wildly at the driver. You've left us behind, you wanker! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, said Postman Pat. I've just had sex with my cat, Jess. <laughs> I should have gone to Specsavers. <laughs> and so Emily learned. If she'd just been a nicer little girl, Mummy and Daddy would never have got divorced. <laughs> said the very hungry caterpillar. This gastric band has changed my life. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Mm. Unlikely things for a sports commentator to say. And there's just yet another Grand Slam victory for Andy Murray. <laughs> <laughs> and now we come to the javelin. If you're watching in 3D, you might want to look away now. <laughs> And here we are at the uh, women's football, uh, but while you're enjoying the game, please spare a thought for the men at home who are going without dinner this evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's stroked that through the covers. Surely it would have been easier just to pull back the duvet. <laughs> 
And here at the British Grand Prix, we've already had a couple of fatalities. Yes, two of the crowd have died of boredom. <laughs> Lewis Hamilton is three seconds ahead, but there's trouble at turn 17 as Dastardly and Muttley have dug a pit. <laughs> I'm here at the Green Court Bowls, and I've started cutting myself. <laughs> He's got the left hook in, and he's finally finished putting up those curtains. <laughs> well, welcome back after the break. You haven't missed much, just the entire Indian innings. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go back to Henley, where Claire Balding is standing with two cocks. <laughs> There's Rio Ferdinand, what a tackle! But uh, enough from me, I really should let these lads continue getting changed. <laughs> Alex Ferguson has substituted Wayne Rooney. Of course, not the first time Rooney has been pulled off by a 69-year-old. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, what a result. The UK Somalian has beat America's Kenyan to show that the Africans aren't going to have it all their own way. <laughs> Thanks for all those fantastic statistics there, Motti. Now go and get a fucking life. <laughs> Unlikely lines from a horror film. You've got a flat-screen TV and brand-new trainers. I know what you did last summer. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just you look nothing like your photo in Match.com. <laughs> is there anybody there? Can you hear me? Is there anybody there? This is the Christian O'Connell Breakfast Show. <laughs> that was Mayor Boris Johnson with his official statement on the riots. <laughs> Have you seen the traffic? It's a nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Alan Bennett's long-awaited remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Nantwich Leaf Blower Kerfuffle. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? No! I'm not paying too much for my car insurance. <laughs> I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. So I gave Mark's dinner party an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like scary movies, Sydney? Oh, oh, sorry, is Sydney there, please? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't keep up payments to your exorcist, there's a danger that your home will become repossessed. <laughs> Joke's on you, Dracula. I've got AIDS. <laughs> I ate his liver with some jelly beans and a nice ombongo. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the ring! I wish that builder would pull his trousers up. <laughs> I don't have to listen to you. You're just a puppet. If you don't shut up, I'm going to put you back in your box. Mr. Clegg. <laughs> I'm afraid he's been bitten by George Michael. <laughs> he's turned into a vampire. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Commercials that never made it to air. Have you got a wicked side? Then you're a prick. Take two bottles into the shower. Not anymore. I've got a proper dildo. <laughs> <laughs> JD Sports. 2,000 looters can't be wrong. <laughs> uh, 
Do you suffer from dull, lifeless hair? Don't worry, Andy Parsons will buy it off you. <laughs> With ABS, sat-nav and airbags, this may be the most advanced condom you ever buy. <laughs> How much did you say you earned for those direct-line car insurance accidents? <laughs> well, people deserve to hear about this. <laughs> honk, 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 honk! <laughs> Dara O'Brien. We work so he doesn't have to. <laughs> cash for cash. Send us your cash in an envelope and we'll send it back, minus commission. Uh. Every year, thousands of bears are captured, tortured and forced to dance in front of crowds of cheering people. Call 0845 now for Ticket Hotline. <laughs> Ash! For cash! <laughs> Put your cremated relatives <laughs> in the middle of <laughs> Got that bloated feeling? My uncle had that, he was dead in a week. <laughs> Smash for cash! Put <laughs> in mashed potato <laughs> in an envelope! <laughs> Don't just book it, Thomas cook it. Dignitas in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> Why have we got barbecues at low, low prices? Because the summer's been shit and no one's bought them. <laughs> At the Dogs Trust, we never put down a healthy dog. But the minute one coughs, it's in the Thames. <laughs> Do you suffer from unsightly chest hair? Should have gone to peck shavers. <laughs> <laughs> Lynx, come on, virgins, wash your cocks. <laughs> Likely things to hear in a police station. <laughs> <laughs> Here, so is the microwave broken again. Taser that meat pie for me, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's unlikely, but I don't suppose anybody has handed in uh, Colonel Gaddafi, have they? <laughs> <laughs> I noticed the burglar making his escape. At this moment, I cursed the police cutbacks and gave chase, shouting, Nino, Nino, <laughs> Nino. <laughs> All units be on the lookout for a purple Renault Clio. Registration number, Saffron Doily 22, Bongella Chrysanthemum. Hiya! <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't manage to evict many of them, Sarge, but the good news is, I got some lucky heather. <laughs> No, I've not come to report a crime. It's just that I really missed the bill, so I thought I'd pop in for an hour. <laughs> uh, here, Sarge, pass us the art section out of the Guardian, will you, mate? <laughs> yes, yes, I know how identity parade works. <laughs> That's her! <laughs> That's her! <laughs> <laughs> That's the woman I robbed. <laughs> Right, listen up, we've got a new man starting. He's half man, half horse. It's Inspector Morse. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, our, uh, our new 50-inch plasma screen TV. It is rather nice, isn't it? Well, if you can't beat him, eh? <laughs> I am charging you with the murder of Mrs Thompson. That'll be £7.19, please. <laughs> Right, listen up, there's a giant fly attacking the station. I've called the SWAT team. <laughs> 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 
Thank God you've arrived, officer. Some bloke just jumped into the boot of my car and shot himself 14 times. <laughs> Yeah, we got the tox report back. Turns out they go straight after the ticks. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to arrest her, so I was about to be honest, my bottle went, cos she shouted out, I put a curse upon you! curse upon you! OK, the next topic is... <laughs> on likely things to hear in a science documentary. Having cloned Ian Wright, we now know that two Ian Wrights don't make an Ian wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Erectile dysfunction. Physical problem? Or has the wife just let herself go a bit? <laughs> well, this is incredible. This is a whole new species of miniature tiger. Oh, no, hang on, it's a cat. <laughs> Now, pay attention, here comes the shampoo bit. <laughs> <laughs> we discovered the source of the quark. It's the sound made by a posh duck. <laughs> <laughs> this is a red dwarf. His name is Anthony Worrell Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the sky at night. And if we look out, we... Oh, hell! Croydon's on fire! <laughs> Despite getting a very bad press, biological weapons work at much lower temperatures than non-biological weapons. <laughs> Without penicillin, well, I'd still be cursing that day I went to Bangkok. <laughs> Tonight, we look at the ginger community. <laughs> Physical anomaly or God's cruel joke? <laughs> ah, the Northern Light. Oh, no, Manchester's on fire. <laughs> But will they find a cure in time? The last hope for mankind lies with scientists here at the Laboratoire Garnier. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight on Show Me the Evidence, we look at the traveller community. <laughs> Can they really put a curse on you? <laughs> And as the sperm swim towards the eggs, it's hard not to think that I've ruined this fried breakfast. <laughs> I'm never again going to have a fried breakfast. Bad things to say in a job interview. When I said I was a Yale student, I studied key-cutting at Mr Minutes. <laughs> Why do I, we, I, we, I, we... <laughs> ..want this job? <laughs> Don't tell him, I have to. No, 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 I applaud your policy of positive discrimination, and that's why I blacked up. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I just check? This office is more than 50 metres from a school. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, no experience? If being abducted by aliens isn't an experience, then I don't know what it is. <laughs> Well, yes, I would, I would make the perfect train driver. I'm always late, and I'd break down really easily. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd make a very good diplomat. Uh, I'd like to live in Paris uh, with all the other parasites. <laughs> <laughs> what do I see myself doing in five years' time? Exactly the same, only on Dave. <laughs> ah. 
thank you for seeing me. Uh, I hope you don't mind if I stay sat down for a moment. I've got a little erection bubbling away. <laughs> <laughs> No, emu, no, emu, no, no, no. <laughs> what can I bring to this job? Uh, how about the photocopier for my last office? <laughs> yes, well, um, in spite of my lack of medical experience, I, I still think of gynaecology as a calling. <laughs> <laughs> what are my weaknesses? Fat birds. <laughs> Is. I'd like things to hear on a consumer programme. This week on Watchdog, another shower of gullible twats ask us to make sense of their piss-poor decision-making. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Watchdog. Here's a dog. But when he asked the cold callers for their identification, they shot Mr Bin Laden with an AK-47. <laughs> I would like to complain about the boomerang I bought. I threw it, but it never came back! <laughs> <laughs> this week, we investigate bikini waxing strips. Are they just a rip-off? <laughs> Tonight, we're investigating fencing and why I got tickets for that instead of the 100 metres final, which is what I wanted. <laughs> Many of you who have bought Death Stars have emailed us complaining about a security problem with one of the exhaust vents. <laughs> <laughs> Although Austin the Butcher claims that his sausages are made of premium meat, we can reveal that's bollocks. <laughs> The crews had a 1940s theme, and Tom and Vera were delighted until they were sunk by a U-boat in the North Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask for it, didn't order it, got it, even though I don't even want it, and it doesn't even work. <laughs> we have some more views on the Coalition after the break. <laughs> What was sold as a vibrator is clearly just a taser with a stale sausage attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> but something was wrong with the car. The clock said 63,000 miles, while the milometer said quarter past three. <laughs> uh... I would like to complain about the sushi restaurant at Gatwick Airport. There's nice big portions going round on the conveyor, but they do taste luggagey. <laughs> Dear Watchdog, I'm extremely pissed off with this product. I bought just for men, my wife used it, and now I am gay. <laughs> Identity theft is on the increase. I'm Dara O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> we work, so he doesn't have to. <laughs> Unlikely instructions. <clears throat> Please do not use this electrical appliance while you're in the bath. Actually, you know what? Go on. <laughs> if you're that dumb, I think we can afford to lose you. <laughs> Nick Clegg Feng Shui. Move everything to the right for an easier life. <laughs> Hot noodle. For best results, put back on the shelf. <laughs> if pain persists, see a doctor. Just make sure it's not Michael Jackson's doctor. <laughs> to light gas, first place match near buttocks. <laughs> One of these condoms has got a hole in it. Are you feeling lucky, punk? <laughs> Dale Farm yoghurt. Contents may settle. <laughs> Please retain these assembly instructions in case you want to disassemble the furniture when you realise moving in with her wasn't the best move after all. <laughs> 
Instructions for sandwich toaster. Week one, eat nothing but toasted sandwiches. <laughs> Week two, put in cupboard and never use again. <laughs> If unsure how to apply condom, take banana and beat erection with it till it goes away. <laughs> Enjoy your animal-shaped biscuits. Do not eat if seal is broken. <laughs> <laughs> to reboot, pick up boots and put them on again. <laughs> Congratulations on your new bread maker. Ooh, I bet King's Mill are quaking in their boots. <laughs> Game is over either when one player collects all cheeses or Daddy has a tantrum and kicks the board across the room. <laughs> are your hands full but you want to transfer ten donuts? <laughs> <laughs> OK. The next topic is on likely things to hear in a restaurant. Let's skip the pudding. You look like you've had enough already. <laughs> wow, thanks for picking up the bill, Dara. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, we don't have snail porridge. No, this isn't owned by Heston Blumenthal. Mm. This is Heston Services. <laughs> <laughs> How does crispy aromatic duck sound? Quack, quack. But that was before it was either crispy or aromatic. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a reservation? Well, I'm not sure about all these Polish people moving over here. <laughs> <laughs> Greek restaurant, so don't worry if you can't pay. The German government will cover it. <laughs> You'd like a Foster's? <laughs> Hang on, let's see if we've got any left. Barry, any Foster's left? Yeah, keg's nearly full, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the tip. If you find the rest of the chef's penis, please let us know. <laughs> Have you been to a harvester before? I'm joking, no one comes twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see the rugby players getting along with the dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an unusual taste, isn't it? What, what, what is in this death by chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see Zara and Mike getting along. Yes, it is an all-you-can-eat night, and that's why you can't come in, Mr Pickles. <laughs> oh, my God. There's a man's face in my soup and it looks just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent choice, sir. This lady is much fitter than your wife. <laughs> Hmm? Rose for the lady. If you want to do something for the lady, why don't you fuck off? <laughs> Commercials that never made it to air. Uh, uh... Fungal foot problem. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> have you been injured in an accident that wasn't your fault? Of course you have, because that is the definition of an accident. <laughs> FIFA Summer Sofa Sale. Total office clear-out. Bribe now, pay later. <laughs> Andrex. Cos who wouldn't want to wipe their ass with a puppy? <laughs> Carlsberg, don't do your girlfriend. But I have. <laughs> 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 
What's that? <laughs> yeah, mate, I got some bad news about your dad. <laughs> Why pay more for ratchet, trifling-ass pilots when you can get to where you're going on EasyJet? A basic bitch will get you there. <laughs> we call it a happy meal. The cow we killed wasn't too chuffed, though. <laughs> Waitrose, two for the price of three. We had debts all over the place, but Wonga took all those debts and put them in one simple loan. They also took a house. <laughs> <laughs> Are your vet's bills getting on top of you? Then why not try Dognatas? <laughs> <laughs> Want to save money on biscuits? Easy. Give blood. <laughs> <laughs> from Laboratoire Garnier Paris. Cos if we said it was from Unit 5 of a Luton Industrial Estate, <laughs> you wouldn't buy it, would you? <laughs> Struggling to sleep? Why not try ten cans of Stella? Did you mistake your girlfriend for a burglar on Valentine's Day? <laughs> then you need to go to Specsavers. <laughs> I can't breathe! I can't breathe! The Lynx effect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one's accent is a bit more racist than that one's accent. There you go. Just compared the meerkats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next topic is lines you wouldn't hear in a sci fi movie. Hi, is that NHS Direct? Yeah, um, a bit of a temperature, and I've got an alien coming out of my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Two paracetamol, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, Mr. Zulu, set course for the fourth quadrant to the Orion Nebula. I think there's a Nando's there. <laughs> We're sorry to announce that there is a replacement beam down service this weekend between the ship and the planet Splug. <laughs> uh, you've got to imagine this in a Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> this is our Independence Day! There you go. <laughs> they abducted us and took us to their spacecraft and then they explored our bodies with strange probes. I'll be honest, it was the best stag night I'd ever been on. <laughs> this man can now reach the full potential of his brain. Joey, Joey, wake up, you can tie your shoes. <laughs> Ream. <laughs> What the people don't know, Captain Kirk, is that when I do that V thing, that means in Vulcan, I've had your mum. <laughs> I think this time tunnel is broken. We have gone a thousand years into the future and Bruce Forsyth is still working. <laughs> <laughs> if you take the red pill, you will enter the Matrix. If you take the blue pill, you will have a boner for seven hours. <laughs> this is it. The machines are taking over. Hashtag apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, better look at it, mate. The problem is your uh, nano boosters are shot and your warp drive is fucked. <laughs> Our planet is dying. We seek a new home. Which of you is Phil and which of you is Kirsty? <laughs> ah. 
The dinosaurs are killing everyone. Why do we keep reopening this park? Who keeps giving us public liability insurance? <laughs> So the plan is you get in the time machine, go back in time, and cock block Hitler's dad. <laughs> phone home. Phone in Joan. No, phone <laughs> home. <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear on a survival show. This is the most terrifying animal you can see in the wild. It has the body of posh spice. <laughs> of course, if you're on an expedition, you must always make sure you boil all the water. Now, this can really slow you down if you come to a lake. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 17 days since my last proper meal, and I am beach body ready, bitches. <laughs> Bear, are you related to George Foreman grills? <laughs> <laughs> I've not had a bath for days on end. And that's because Rob Beckett's dad is in there. <laughs> There is barely any water here, so we've been collecting our urine. But this morning, some of it was gone. And that is taking the piss. <laughs> <laughs> I spent three days in the jungle with nothing to eat but raw caterpillars. I remember the moment I walked back into civilization. Whew, there are a few butterflies in my stomach, I can tell you. <laughs> When I was thirsty, I was forced to drink my own urine. I'm now hungry and dreading dinner. <laughs> and when you're in the wild, you've got to remember what you learn at Scouts. Don't tell anyone our little secret. Well, night is falling, it's raining and I'm in the shelter, but it still feels dangerous here. There are six teenagers staring at me and the bus doesn't arrive for 20 minutes. <laughs> if you suddenly see a bear extremely close to you, the best thing to do, stand stock still. Pull down your trousers and just let it have sex with you. <laughs> On the men's island, Derek's drinking coconut water because Derek's a hipster twat. <laughs> After three months totally alone on the island, it's amazing that John hasn't gone mad. Isn't that right, John? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> so, I've managed to make a raft to escape the island by smashing up some boats. <laughs> OK. The next topic is... Unlikely things to hear over at Tannoy. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Waitrose, you smug, rich pricks. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Would somebody please go to the power tools aisle and get me a drill? <laughs> if you see an unattended bag, please don't report it. Remember, you're in world of luggage. <laughs> Good evening, ladies. Top Shop will be closing in five minutes. Please make your way to the till unless you're over 30. In which case, piss off to M&S, you ancient old hag. <laughs> <laughs> this is an announcement for the front desk of the swimming baths. Could doctor someone's done a shit in the pool? <laughs> Please come to reception. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Would the couple having sex in aisle two please stop? Spillage in aisle two. <laughs> The 1625 has unfortunately been cancelled and has been replaced by replacement bus service. EasyJet would like to apologise <laughs> for all passengers who are going to Greece. <laughs> I only work in the post office for the crumpet. Watch this. Widow number two, please. <laughs> Tonight's performance of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, the part of the child catcher, will be played by a 1970s TV presenter. <laughs> Welcome to Sexist Airways. I'm just going to pop on the uh, seatbelt sign for a moment because we're swapping to a lady pilot. <laughs> We are now coming into land in Russia, where the local time is 19.56. <laughs> Welcome aboard the one-way saga service special to Switzerland. <laughs> Just trying to have a laugh. <laughs> Attention to the submarine crew of HMS Nando's. Be careful not to burn your eyes on the peri periscope. <laughs> Lost children can be found at the Lost Children tent. If they're not claimed by the end of the day, they will be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Megabus. Things haven't worked out quite as well as you were hoping, have they? <laughs> Welcome to the sexist supermarket. <laughs> Check out number three. <laughs> Unlikely film trailers. A man. A man who only wants one thing. Strepsils. <laughs> In his toughest assignment yet, Peter Parker has to pick a peck of pickled peppercorn. <laughs> Drama, intrigue, romance, gardening, spoons, all these and other words in Dictionary the Movie. <laughs> All your favourite administrators are back in Human Resources 2. This time it's personnel. <laughs> <laughs> when a hairpiece gets possessed by the devil, there'll be hell to pay. <laughs> <laughs> he loves sex, but he has no arms. Which position will he choose? Missionary impossible. <laughs> If you see one film this year, then you're probably a new parent. <laughs> <laughs> it was a love story that crossed the species barrier. He was a man, she was a cow. Coming soon, Beef Encounter. <laughs> Coming soon. A 3D film where you don't get bored halfway through and lift up the glasses just to see what the screen looks like without it. <laughs> Every Year I Love You More, starring Michael Jackson and Benjamin Button. <laughs> Coming soon, a story of premature ejaculation. <laughs> The Grand Budapest Hotel. Brilliant, The Times. Five stars, The Guardian. The beds weren't made. TripAdvisor. <laughs> part man, part machine, part bird, part drum. It's Robo Bongo Cuckoo Cop. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Thank you very much. <laughs> A group of Greeks try to get away with their money. Chicken run. <laughs> My Dad Pictures presents... Your man. I know him from something. Anyway, him. And a woman. I think she was in ER. Maybe it was house. She was definitely a doctor. Join forces to fight. I know him. He's gone awful old looking, hasn't he? <laughs> It's the bromance of the year. Ed and David Miliband star in What the Fuck Was the Point of That Then? <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things you wouldn't hear on the radio. Mime. <laughs> I'm sorry for that small pause just at the end of that record there. Only my shit took slightly longer than I expected. <laughs> this is Top DJs of the 1970s. Prison radio has never sounded so good. <laughs> A hideous car crash has occurred at the end of the A19. It's called Doncaster. <laughs> Another shipping forecast issued by the Met Office at 2343 on Saturday the 8th. It's going to piss it down. <laughs> you're listening to BBC Wiltshire because your car radio has lost reception to what you were listening to. <laughs> and next up on the archers, there's an axe murderer on the loose. Not really. Someone has an argument with their housekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Travel news. A coachload of origami enthusiasts has broken down on the M1 and they're all currently sat on the hard shoulder making paper models of cars. Traffic is described as stationary. <laughs> You're listening to Saga Radio. You're listening... <laughs> Little, Aldi, later, Tesco. This concludes the shopping forecast. <laughs> Get in! Have you been injured at work? Maybe you should turn the radio off and concentrate properly on what you're doing. <laughs> But you're dead. We're all dead. We've all been dead from the beginning. You've been listening to the final ever episode of The Archers. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on Gardener's Question Time, I'll be trying not to laugh like a schoolboy when a woman phones in with a problem about her box hedge. <laughs> This is local radio, it's 4am and no-one's listening. Let's play Say Something Racist Roulette. <laughs> <laughs> Due to tomorrow's BBC strike, tomorrow's Today programme will be today's Today programme, but called Yesterday. <laughs> Sometimes when you listen to the radio, there's a, there's a tune that you can't get out of your head. It sort of <laughs> plays again and again and again. <laughs> sort of gets faster and faster <laughs> and faster <laughs> and finally it comes on. <laughs> Unlikely greeting cards. Roses are red, violets are blue. Sorry, you're dead. What can you do? <laughs> Sorry you're leaving. And sorry to break it to you in such a cowardly fashion. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, whoever you are, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> Roses are red, violets are red, the greenhouse is red. I think I'm bleeding to death. <laughs> At this difficult time, I'm thinking of you, wearing suspenders and a mask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I saw this and thought of you. Blank inside. <laughs> <laughs> My feelings can't be put into words, although the judge did describe them as inappropriate. <laughs> that was a scrape. Congratulations on your circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you did it. And we'll prove it. The Crown Prosecution Service. <laughs> It's a girl, not a woman, which is why you're going to prison. <laughs> With deepest sympathies for the loss of your grandmother. Slash, happy housewarming! <laughs> <laughs> You've passed away. Twenty-one years, and this time you'll probably die in prison. <laughs> to our darling son, on your twenty-first birthday, now get the fuck out of our house. <laughs> Please help me, I'm trapped inside a North Korean card factory. <laughs> Also, Iron Man says, happy fourth birthday. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. When you go down on me, please don't chew. <laughs> OK, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear on a science documentary. The dinosaurs were wiped out by a giant asteroid. Silly them for all standing in the same place. <laughs> Does it burn anything other than Bunsen? <laughs> <laughs> he named the star after himself, and now we find ourselves looking at Arthur Cockmonster III. <laughs> so, it glows in the dark, and it has a half-life of a thousand years. Frankly, I've never done a poo like it. <laughs> On today's show, we'll be talking about the Jurassic period, where only dinosaurs and Bruce Forsyth roam the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> He's old, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> For Sarah Palin, it's conclusive proof that man and dinosaur existed together. For everybody else, the Flintstones is just a cartoon. <laughs> Next, biology. Why is that gorilla so sexy? <laughs> <laughs> Let the proton see the electron. <laughs> Scientists in Loughborough have found the formula to make the perfect cup of tea, which is quite controversial, as the grant was for AIDS research. <laughs> You've been watching me, Richard Dawkins. Good night and God bless. <laughs> <laughs> See, and the um, problem with cocaine is it's well Moorish. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could ask a proper scientist about this, or we could ask Daro Breen. <laughs> Hello, my name's Dara Breen. <laughs> and to try and bring science to the masses, I'm going to appear in a programme with Stephen Hawking <laughs> wearing a ridiculous hat. <laughs> just, 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 just enough with the, just, you know. <laughs> I love that hat, by the way. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dara Breen. <laughs> And I've got a massive head and a massive brain. But all I get to do in this bit is just press a little buzzer. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Mr. O'Brien, I award you a PhD. <laughs> Phenomenal head, Dara. <laughs> I would just like to say that I think Dara O'Brien's a legend. <laughs> I work with Dara O'Brien. <laughs> and today, my experiment is to turn this joke into a P45. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely things for a sports commentator to say. Embarrassing, humiliating, bringing shame on the sport. Welcome to Wimbledon Today with me, Claire Balding. <laughs> and it all comes to this. After years of training and preparation, I'm commentating on the poxy water polo. <laughs> <laughs> Mo Farah has apologised for his association with substances that the British public regard as abhorrent and has said he will never advertise corn again. <laughs> to the golf, where Tiger Woods apparently travels with two inflatable sex dolls now in case he gets a hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> and he's found a chocolate biscuit down the back of the sofa, but he's not going to celebrate because it's his old club. <laughs> <laughs> and he's resting two balls on the cushion there, which is why he won't be allowed back into Icon. <laughs> And he pops the cork and he's spraying everyone with champagne. Welcome to the first Conservative budget since 1996. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are at the Crucible, all burning to death! <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the speed skating, and now crack cocaine curling! <laughs> The American and the Russian are out in front, and here comes the Finn. Yes, they're going to swim a lot faster now. The shark is chasing them. <laughs> <laughs> and so they've brought up a curtain around the horse that fell earlier, but no, we've got good news. He's moved to a farm in the countryside. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here we are at the Rugby League. It's tough, man. It's better than Rugby Union, and at the same time, ever so slightly more gay. <laughs> <laughs> and this decision's going to a touch judge, and, yes, it's sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is his third attempt with a bar at this height. No! Nope. Still can't get served. <laughs> <laughs> and here come the two Red Bulls, which is what you'll need to keep yourself awake during Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joined here by Balding, or Alan Shearer, as he likes to be known. <laughs> Raikkonen now on super soft. The Viagra simply not working. <laughs> and if you want to find out what this function key on the keyboard does, join us after the break on F1. <laughs> and after the break, join me, Claire Balding, presenting everything. I present everything now. Everything is mine. <laughs> everything. <laughs> OK. The next topic is unlikely things to hear on a gardening program. <laughs> There's something about eating food that's come from your own garden. This is quite a hearty stew I've made out of a squirrel I shot with an air rifle. <laughs> 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 well, to answer your question, I tend to keep mine on a hose reel, but then I'm very lucky down there. <laughs> These pine trees smell suspiciously of air freshener. <laughs> My advice would be don't splash out on expensive gnomes. Do what I do and just simply varnish some small children I found playing in the park. <laughs> <laughs> I call this my Blue Peter garden because it's the first place that I've 
Blue Peter. <laughs> Remember, the trick is to get your pitchfork right through it before you take it and throw it back over the fence. <laughs> well, we've had a letter from Mrs Smith of Epsom who's asked us to identify something that she has found in her garden. Well, Mrs Smith, that's a dog turd. <laughs> I've got a letter here from Maureen in Doncaster who's asking a question about herbs. Um, in response to your letter, Maureen, I would recommend about £200 for an ounce, and if it's really good shit, £300. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the wheelbarrow, and tomorrow I'll show you another sexual position. <laughs> ah. So, it's uh, quite simple to take up an old patio. All you do is... Li just leave it. <laughs> not talk about it ever again. <laughs> I woke up in a field of aubergines the other day, and I thought, none of these baby seals have faces. <laughs> right, welcome to the UKIP garden. Sod the lawns, let's concentrate on them borders. <laughs> So, you could use a lawnmower or a strimmer, although I would recommend waxing. <laughs> Take the shovel, force it right down like that, save your fortune in vet's fees having it put down professionally. <laughs> Help! I'm being attacked by pineapples! Help! Help! I like to plant my herbs in alphabetical order. People say to me, how do you find the time? I say, it's there next to the sage. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely lines from a blockbuster movie. I cannot hold her, Captain! I cannot hold her! Oh, no, hang on, I'll put her in the cup holder until she cools down. <laughs> Luke, I am your father. I think your mum went for about three stormtroopers before me. <laughs> Good news, Lord Vader. The rebels have voted 55 to 45 to stay within the Empire. <laughs> I am Thor, protector of Asgard, god of thunder, and I have lost my hammer. <laughs> Great hell, where in this Wix can I buy a new one? <laughs> Nobody puts baby in a coma. Is it raining? I hadn't noticed. And now over to Stuart with the sport. <laughs> You're right, Frodo. This is an unexpected journey. We're on a replacement bus service. <laughs> you know what? I never liked Private Ryan. I say fuck him. <laughs> In a dystopian future, one lone man emerges intent on destruction. For more on the budget, tune in to Newsnight at 10. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. This is Warwick Davis. <laughs> <laughs> I see dead people all the time. I work at Dignitas. <laughs> In all the weather spoons, in all the world, he had to walk into mine. <laughs> Tall fella, answered to the name of Dara, said I'd recognize him from the back of a megabus. <laughs> this is the furthest outreaches of the universe, Alpha Centauri. How did they get to host the World Cup? Are you looking at me? Are you looking at me? It's just very difficult to tell you've got a lazy eye. <laughs> I'm afraid it's bad news, Dumbledore. The Ofsted inspectors have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> they brought the dinosaurs back to life. 
Welcome to the best exotic Marigold Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, Batman? Um, well, Robin's dead. Uh, Catwoman just dragged him in and tore his guts out and <laughs> <laughs> left him at the foot of me bed. <laughs> <laughs> It's me, Dick Man. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a travel programme. Look at these wide, sandy beaches. Fantastic. And we're almost certain the Ebola has now gone. <laughs> <laughs> and the most wonderful thing about a trip to China is you get the opportunity to meet the child that made your trousers. <laughs> Said it. <laughs> South End is a lot like Las Vegas. It's the only other place in the world where you can play for sex with chips. <laughs> <laughs> this is Taiwan. I've given him a number because I can't pronounce his name properly. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to Italy's quaintest vineyards. <laughs> now, if you are travelling to America, remember to pack some anti-sickness tablets because this is where Piers Morgan lives. <laughs> Running, cycling, rock climbing, you'll do anything to get out of this shithole. <laughs> The accommodation, the weather, the food, all of these wonderful things help you to forget how smelly the locals are. <laughs> yeah, I said it! Yeah. <laughs> Today we've got a flavour of Thailand with just a little bit of a rack. I'm in a branch of Thai rack. <laughs> <laughs> this week I'm in Kyrgyzstan answering your questions like how do you spell it and where the fuck is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, here we are in Lewisham. Now, it is a very impoverished area, but there's a lot to see and do if what you like seeing and doing is crime. <laughs> this truly is the best way to see Portsmouth, while looking at a picture of it when you're in Paris. <laughs> uh... I'm almost certain my producer has got this wrong. I'm on a train to Leighton with a load of football fans. This is the Orient Express. <laughs> Something about travel. Yeah, I said it! <laughs> <laughs> this is Keflavik, one of Iceland's oldest geezers. You all right, mate? <laughs> When you arrive, why not try island hopping, or as it's also known as river dance? <laughs> <laughs> when you travel, it's important to immerse yourself in the culture. So here I am in Malia, being fingered outside the lamb and flag. <laughs> <laughs> on likely things to hear on Breakfast TV. You're watching Breakfast TV because the chemist won't have your Valium ready until mid morning. <laughs> Breakfast news now. A man has drowned in a bowl of Cheerios. Sadly and ironically, his family didn't get a chance to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> this is BBC Breakfast. Look at it, that's meant to be a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you didn't see earlier on, we had steps. And that's why we interviewed Stephen Hawking outside. <laughs> Stay put for Jeremy Kyle. Today's tooth count is three. <laughs> the world of show business has suffered another tragic loss. But don't worry, it's one of the ones you already thought was dead. <laughs> A lot of people ask me how I stay awake at this time. Well, you know what they say, early to bed, crack cocaine in the morning. <laughs> <laughs>
Today, we're looking at the world's biggest birthday cake. Oh, no, Eamon's done it. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been affected by any of the issues in today's Jeremy Carl show, then phone us up. You're the sort of freak we need to get on tomorrow. <laughs> Later on, we'll be meeting a man who has to go through 50 steps before he can orgasm. All that to come. <laughs> it's Channel 5, it's 5am, and I am going to sack my agent. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time for the traffic news now, here on Christian Breakfast Time. So let's go over to our eye in the sky... God. <laughs> If you hear a knock at your door, you could be the winner of £20,000. <laughs> Two knocks and it's a police raid. Hide the guns. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going over to the kitchen where Chef Tony will be cooking up an excuse for why he's been texting my wife. <laughs> Next up on Channel 4 Breakfast is a brand new homegrown British sitcom. Only joking, it's everyone loves fucking rape. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's take a look at the traffic. There it is. <laughs> brum, brum. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to this one. In the studio, we've got the new Doctor Who. Accidentally killed someone. <laughs> The next topic is lines you wouldn't read in a romantic novel. <laughs> the dark stranger emerged from the sea, his wet shirt clinging against his muscular torso. Soon, she held him and said the words she'd been dying to say for ages. I'm UK Border Patrol and you're under arrest. <laughs> She felt every part of his eight inches. He was stiff, absolutely rigid, and even in her innocence, she knew her hamster was dead. <laughs> he felt a swelling down there. Shouldn't have tried to bang a beehive. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he took her hand in his and squeezed it. Now, he thought, I wonder where the rest of her body is. <laughs> I want to role-play. I'll be a prince from a mythical land, and you be your sister. <laughs> <laughs> he cupped her breast and put her ass in a bowl. <laughs> she was into really weird shit. <laughs> You could make love, she said. Or vole, he replied, looking up from their game of Scrabble. <laughs> she felt her bosom heaving as Mr Darcy came ever closer. Blimey, he said. You don't get many of them to the pound. <laughs> He held it tightly, and they skipped off through the fields of daffodils. And it was at that moment she thought he might be a little bit gay. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at the tattoo of Chinese writing on her back. He didn't know what it meant, but he did know she'd put out on a first date. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn, you've got me blindfolded. What are you going to do now? Nothing. I just wanted to highlight the injustice of inmates detained at Camp X-Ray without a fair trial. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why does it end like this, she said. Childhood accident, he replied. I crushed it in the trouser press. <laughs> <laughs> the debutantes paraded in the ballroom in front of the rich landowners. And the Master of Ceremonies proudly proclaimed, Let the Darcys fondle the arses. <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie, I'm going to kiss you like you've never been kissed before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Of course I've seen a black penis before, she said. <laughs> Just never attached to a white man. <laughs> Rejected exam questions. History. Did I delete it? <laughs> if cycling 10 miles a day uses up 400 calories, explain why Boris Johnson is still a fat bastard. <laughs> if the sun is 93 million miles away, how can that cost £32 in an Uber? <laughs> Where is Greece? Is it A, the southern Mediterranean, or B, up shit creek? <laughs> what does the French phrase déjà vu literally translate as? <laughs> <laughs> Using examples of Michelangelo's work, write 500 words on why he was the best turtle. <laughs> What does the French phrase déjà vu <laughs> literally translate <laughs> Question A. Media studies. Is it a real subject? <laughs> Question B. Is it... <laughs> Using a compass and ruler, draw perfect cock and balls. Is this a rhetorical question? <laughs> you may now commence your anal sex exam. Please turn over. <laughs> <clears throat> Explain how UKIP became a major force in British politics without using the word wanker. <laughs> If Jay-Z is unfortunate enough to have a problem with a bitch, how many problems does Jay-Z now have? <laughs> Aggravated violence, question one. Why might you use a bit of rubber hose pipe? <laughs> no marks. <laughs> what colour is this dress? White and gold or black and blue? Discuss. <laughs> If a train leaves the station at the correct time and arrives at its destination at the correct time, how cool would that be? <laughs> Chemistry. Me, you. Is there any? <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to say when running for US president. I'm Hillary Clinton, and if you elect me the first female president of the United States, I promise you that on my first day in the White House, I will hire a very attractive male intern. He will be on his knees, not having sexual relations with me all day. <laughs> hashtag payback, hashtag long game. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to Washington. Why? I want to see what color the White House is. <laughs> No, we can't! <laughs> <laughs> the name Clinton is in the DNA of the White House. In fact, the DNA of Clinton on the walls of the White House. <laughs> I know the value of family because I sold one of my children to pay for this campaign. <laughs> As president, I will welcome immigrants. Because the White House is massive and it's not going to clean itself. <laughs> <laughs> I will govern for all of this country. Not just the metropolitan cities on the coast, but also you cousin shaggers down south. <laughs> I would like to introduce you to my new Homeland Security Advisor. Say hi, Lamb Chop. <laughs> Come on, of course I'm the guy to succeed Obama. You know what they say? Once you go black. <laughs> ah. 
If you elect me America's first colorblind president, I will do everything I can to uphold the values of the brown, white and green. <laughs> I would now like to talk to you people in a language of my own devising. <laughs> I want to put more boots on the ground in Afghanistan and also two more branches of paper chase. <laughs> what you must remember is the people we need to convince are the great American people. And most of them are as thick as pig shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to apologize for Mr. Trump. Which is what I say when I've just farted in bed. <laughs> <laughs> when I was little, I did not plan to be president of the United States. This is more like a holding job until I get to rule a good country. <laughs> I am American through and through. Cut me, and I will shoot you in the face. <laughs> I wish to have no secrets in this campaign. I wish to be completely open, and it is done. That is why. I'm going to start that again, because I fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> we Republicans want to reach out to all Americans. Blacks, whites, Chinesey-looking ones. <laughs> I want to have no secrets in this campaign, and that is why I have gathered you here tonight to tell you I shot gay at JFK. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely things to hear on a consumer program. Dear Anne, the other day I was changing my baby's nappy and he weed right in my face. Does this mean I can make a PPI claim? <laughs> Well, the toilet wasn't connected and there was no water coming out of the taps. And that's the last time I have a poo in the showroom at B&Q. <laughs> An important recall announcement now as it transpires a large shipment of party poppers was mistakenly packaged as tampons. <laughs> Bad news for electricity consumers. N-Power has been bought by N-Dubs. <laughs> Critics say Botox is too expensive, but we spoke to 50 people who just paid for the treatment and none of them looked surprised. <laughs> Mr Jones got a nasty rash from his new blanket. Good job he kept the receipt. Unfortunately, it doesn't cover as much as his body, it's not half as warm. <laughs> when they came home to find saloon doors and six dead Native Americans, they knew they were the victim of cowboy builders. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, we'd like to apologise for the mispronunciation on last week's show, and particularly to those people who, as a result, have invested all of their life savings in ISIS. <laughs> the house was haunted, and when he refused to pay the £200 for the exorcism, it was repossessed. <laughs> Dear Watchdog, I bought these pork scratchings, but they all taste a bit David Cameron y. <laughs> The kids were left shocked, frightened and in tears. So our advice, if you're hiring a face painter, don't book a surrealist. <laughs> <laughs> a word of advice for anyone that wants to buy shares in the company that makes Toblerone. This is a pyramid scheme. <laughs> If you've been tempted to go abroad for cheap boob jobs, you might reconsider after hearing about Sally, who came back from Thailand and discovered her implants had been filled with helium and now they've gone tits up. <laughs> <laughs> OK. The next topic is lines you wouldn't hear in a kid's film. <laughs> Why are you crying, Mummy, said Pepper. <laughs> well, said Mummy <laughs> Pig. <laughs> Uh, 
What did Cameron do to you, babe? <laughs> but why are we going this way, said Bilbo. Well, said Gandalf, we've got to find some way of stretching this shit to three films. <laughs> Bad news, Dorothy. The cowardly lion has been shot by an American dentist. <laughs> and here come Lala, Tinky Winky, and Poe, or the Shadow Cabinet, as they're also known. <laughs> it's bad news, Pumba. Simba has been shot by an American dentist. <laughs> Here comes Captain Hook, who turned to piracy after his benefits were stopped. <laughs> no, James, that isn't a giant peach. That's Nicki Minaj walking away from us. <laughs> Edmund, Lucy, bad news. <laughs> Hi, Harry Potter. It's me, your friend, Ron Weasley. Don't I look a little bit like that James Acaster we saw on Mock the Week? Hey, here's a good idea. Let's go to all of his gigs and shout Ron Weasley at him in the audience, cos no-one's ever done that before. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we're the railway children, except on Sundays when we're known as the bus replacement children. <laughs> Once a year, there is an event called the Hunger Games, or as some call it, London Fashion Week. <laughs> half grizzly bear and half buffalo. The gruffalo was the biggest, scariest animal in the whole wood, until one day he got a job presenting Mock the Week. Nemo? Me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nanny McPhee, I've got bad news. We're replacing you with Nanny McSmallerfee from Belarus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Herbie, a VW Beetle. I've falsified my emissions tests. <laughs> Well, as you can see, we filmed the whole movie over Skype, which is why we called it Frozen. <laughs> the wonderful thing about tickers is we can disembowel a gazelle in ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely things for a sports commentator to say. And that's a wonderful sleight of hand from the Welsh fly half. He's picked up the loose ball, he's tucked it back in his shorts, <laughs> and nobody seems to have noticed. <laughs> I can see Nico Rosberg's helmet. <laughs> Apologies, after 15 years in this job, I've just been told it's not pronounced croquette. <laughs> <laughs> and after that victory, they'll be dancing on the street of Samoa tonight. <laughs> 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 100 metres in four hours, 26 minutes, and that is metre reading at its very best. <laughs> now, Gary Kasparov, he's going to move his pawn, and he's done it just in time. His wife's home, but he's got it under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to beach volleyball. The players are currently getting changed into their kits while their mums hold a towel up in front of them. <laughs> and Shane Warne will be laughing on the other side of his face after that surgery. <laughs> I'd like to apologise. What you're watching is, in fact, judo. And not, as I said earlier, timed pyjama cuddling. <laughs> Oh, 
this should be relatively easy for Rory McElroy. Oh, how has he done that? All he had to do was say, get a Santander, one, two, three, <laughs> it <now." laughs> Kasparov toying with his bishop. <laughs> and on his wife's home, she's caught him! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that pot was remarkable. But now I've got a major case of the munchies. <laughs> We'd just like to refute the idea that the BBC has lost coverage rights of all good sports. We now cross to a girl playing noughts and crosses against a clown. <laughs> <laughs> what a thrilling cricket match. <laughs> <laughs> left hand, big right hand, right hand again, big left hand. Why has no one put these gloves? in pairs. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is a furlong? <laughs> <laughs> OK. The next topic is unlikely things for a continuity announcer to say. On ITV2 next, what Katie did next? Which I'm guessing is get her tits out and marry some thick prick for publicity purposes. <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> A very special episode of Songs of Praise now, coming live from Stringfellows. <laughs> that was Game of Thrones, and if you're affected by any of the issues raised in that show, what the fuck is wrong with your family? <laughs> Is masturbation bad for you? That's not the next programme, I'm just thinking aloud. <laughs> <laughs> next up, baking and entering with Anthony Worrell Thompson. <laughs> next up, Ross Kemp meets one of America's toughest gangs. But before that, a minute's silence for Ross Kemp. <laughs> No! Oh, this is bullshit! Hate it when the eggheads win. <laughs> <laughs> now on Channel 4, one born every minute, including graphic scenes of childbirth that some viewers may find inspiration to get a coil. <laughs> and now on Channel 4, skins. Four skins. <laughs> Next up on Channel 4, plus one, minus two, divided by three. <laughs> Countdown. <laughs> Next up, we have literally the only episode of Top of the Pops 2 we're allowed to show. <laughs> <laughs> that was Mock the Week. Wasn't it weird when one of them said the exact same thing I'm saying right now? Still, talented fella. <laughs> Next up on BBC... Wait a minute, are those hippos swimming in a circle? What? <laughs> Why are we watching Homes Under the Hammer? <laughs> <laughs> now it's one of those X Factor episodes where they sing next to a swimming pool, I presume, to prepare them for a life singing on cruise ships. <laughs> <laughs> ah. You're watching the adult channel Plus One, cos that Viagra's taking a while to kick in. <laughs> Well, next up, it's Midlands Today, so if you're watching in the Orkneys, you can fuck off. <laughs> On likely lines from a children's book. <laughs> Mr Stubborn wouldn't leave. He was the elected leader of the Labour Party. <laughs> <laughs> I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow you, Keith Vaz. <laughs> As Noddy looked at his new friends, Rampant Rabbit and Linda the Love Egg, he realised he was in a very different kind of toy town. <laughs> ah. 
And all the animals of Buttercup Farm celebrated because Percy Pig was going to the slaughterhouse and they never had to listen to that whiny little bastard again. <laughs> And the beautiful woman was cursed to sleep for a hundred years. And that's your defence, is it, Mr Cosby? <laughs> she didn't do it. Don't boo her. <laughs> huh? I'm Paddington Bear from Peru, said Paddington. And if you show me where the toilet is, I'll poo out this condom of cocaine. <laughs> It's the absolutely horrific follow-up to Netflix and Chill. Swallows and Amazons. <laughs> <laughs> and was there a happy ending? Well, the prince did love massage parlours. <laughs> I will never tell you my name. You will have to guess my name, said Rumpelstiltskin, really holding up the queue at Starbucks. <laughs> From under the bridge came the voice of the troll. Where wow, women can't be Ghostbusters, send! <laughs> <laughs> Every day, Jack and Jill have to walk up a hill to fetch just one pail of water. <laughs> but for just five pounds a month... <laughs> oh, it wasn't a giant peach after all, thought James as he watched the big, friendly giant put on his swimming trunks. <laughs> he pushed aside the clothes and there, at the back of the wardrobe, found a magical land of nipple clamps and lube. <laughs> <laughs> There's an Indian in the cupboard. I think he's hiding from you, Kip. <laughs> oh, well, come on, come on, sir. I've been in this cupboard for bloody ages. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things you wouldn't hear on a quiz show. You've already used your 50-50 to narrow down the options to A, in, or B, out. Mr Cameron, are you sure you want to ask the audience? <laughs> Well, in that round on sexually transmitted diseases, you passed on four. <laughs> we asked you for things that start with an E. You said, a great night out with the lads. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Britain's only quiz about birds of prey. Fingers on buzzards, please. <laughs> Here at The Chase, we just want to reiterate that our chase is not called The Dark Destroyer for any ethnic reasons. <laughs> now, please, could you welcome our new chaser, Raj the Head Wobbler Patel. <laughs> so, the final round on OAP quiz is sudden death. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Eggheads. Well, we couldn't call it smug pricks, could we? <laughs> Welcome to Tipping Point, for people who are too thick to follow the chase. <laughs> <laughs> Name? Keith Vaz. I mean, Jim. <laughs> Occupation? MP. I mean, washing machine salesman! <laughs> I'm afraid we're going to have to take your first answer, so let's see if the capital of Azerbaijan is... Fuck if I know. <laughs> Is that your final answer? I'll marry someone else, then. <laughs> well, at the end of this week's episode of University Challenge, the scores are Durham 170, Exeter 145. But, of course, the real winner is Ivo's dad, Hugh at home, who got two questions right and is going to bang on about it for the rest of the bloody week. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've given the contestants their meth and sent them to Hampton Court. Welcome to the Crystal Maze. <laughs> My chosen specialised subject, uh, your wife. Yeah, you heard me. <laughs> <sighs> I've started, so I'll finish. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, that was the banker, and he says he thinks you're going to accept this deal because in his box is your wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, today it's Kelly Brook and Joey Essex versus Stevens Hawking and Fry. This is fucking pointless. <laughs> Lines you wouldn't hear in a TV detective show. These dots, these dashes, what do they mean, Inspector? Morse? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, Poirot, but Brexit means Brexit, sir. So... <laughs> Welcome to Midsummer, Officer Patel. <laughs> On entering the house, we found a feline jammed into a Xerox machine. We think it was a copycat crime. <laughs> Welcome to Baker Street, madam. It seems you came from Sevenoaks via Waterloo, and you bought those shoes in Selfridges. And you are here because you fear someone is stalking you. <laughs> Sarge, I've searched all his pockets and there's no sign of the stolen butt plug. <laughs> Blood, skin, fragments of bone. Why did I order the sausages? <laughs> <laughs> and according to the coroner's report, he had his head removed and a wedge of lime shoved down his neck. Sorry, that's the coroner's report. <laughs> You're arresting me for playing chess in the road? It's cos I'm black, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's elementary, is it, you sarky prick? <laughs> <laughs> I think going undercover at the strip joint is a good idea. But is it really your thing, Miss Marple? <laughs> There is some semen at the crime scene. What can I say? I love forensics. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Watson, how about this week you solve the crime and I'll ask all the stupid fucking questions. <laughs> <laughs> this week on the bill, an unlikely suspect, someone who could act. <laughs> The bloods have come back from the lab, but the crypts are held up in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry for your loss, Mrs Trump. Now, firstly, can you think of anyone who didn't have a motive to do this? <laughs> These were his movements just before he was killed. <gasps> you! <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... <laughs> Things you didn't hear at the Olympics. And that's a world record from Usain Bolt. 9.5 in one night! <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's see what's happening in the velodrome. Yep. Cycling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you won a gold. Oh, well done. What in? Canoeing? Oh, get a life, mate. <laughs> I've just come out of the diving pool. Look at the colour of my legs. <laughs> Look at that masterful control of his javelin. He really is the best streaker we've had all year. <laughs> Well, this is the pommel horse, and that plaintive neigh is the horse they are pommeling. <laughs> <laughs> Time for the next fight now. He uh, floats like a butterfly, he stings like a bee. He's got a black belt, he's got five black belts. OK, he's a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> And if you'd like to enjoy our coverage of the dressage, we recommend MDMA. <laughs> and his penis has slapped the top of the bar. That is a straight ban from Weatherspoons. <laughs> uh, 
the allegations of drug use have been strenuously denied by the new Russian Minister for Doping, Keith Vaz. <laughs> We were afraid the Chinese were going to use doping, and here she is, what a fantastic athlete, doping! <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news, Ryan Lochte has tested positive for being a twat. <laughs> Oscar Pistorius has jumped the gun, and for that, he'll only get six years. <laughs> well, a nearly perfect execution there, but not quite as perfect as the one he'll receive when he returns to North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> you join me live at the All Stance in fucking state of it. <laughs> Things you'd never read in the Bible. <laughs> Eve took the apple. Bollocks, she said. He hasn't got a headphone jack. <laughs> <laughs> and it had all been a dream. <laughs> <laughs> and in the beginning, there was the word, and the word was good, but it wasn't compatible with Max. <laughs> After the Last Supper came the last argument about who had a starter. <laughs> oh, I should have known it would be you with a name like Bloody Judas. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's rained for 40 days and 40 nights, and Noah said, next year we holiday abroad. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I have five loaves. And two fishes, he said. Who wants cod in breadcrumbs? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus handed out cans of Dr Pepper and said, drink this in remembrance of me. That's right, my full name is Dr Jesus Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> People who enjoyed this book also enjoyed the Quran and the Torah. <laughs> There was stress in the Garden of Eden. Adam wanted to leave, but Eve had voted remain. <laughs> <laughs> this book has been rated 18 due to graphic violence, moderate threat and homophobia. <laughs> God is love. The devil is 40. Match point. <laughs> And most importantly of all, thou shalt not board the train until other people have alighted the train. <laughs> <laughs> when Jesus saw all of the tables outside of the church, he went mental and started smashing everything up because he hated fates and had lost all of his money on the Guess the Weight of the Cake competition. <laughs> <laughs> there is but one commandment greater than these. Secure the talent before you buy the bake-off. <laughs> <laughs> Thou shall not steal, unless from the self-service checkout. <laughs> you all do it. <laughs> Birthday cards, no way, is there? <laughs> uh, no, actually, my mum couldn't have done that because she's a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> the animals came in two by two, for twas Orange Wednesday. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Lines you wouldn't hear in a James Bond film. <laughs> Sorry, mate, it's his spoons. We don't do martini. Do you want to chug a woo-woo? <laughs> <laughs> We've invented you a new phone bond. It's exactly the same as the old phone, but you need to buy a new charger. <laughs> We've got the latest news on Thunderball 007. No one won last week and it's a rollover. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Mr. Bond. Welcome to this mandatory course on sexual harassment in the workplace. <laughs> Hi, uh, the name's Bond. Uh, it's not actually 007, they're zeros. Otherwise, I'd be called, ooh, seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Mr. Bond, I'm very flattered by your advances, but uh, you are a complete stranger. You work for my enemy, and I am menstruating very heavily. <laughs> Bond, meet your children, 005, 003, and 0018 months. <laughs> You want my full name, of course. It's Bond. James Skipton Building Society. Fixed rate, one year. <laughs> Bond. <laughs> <laughs> so another gadget, Bond. Uh, this is a way of distracting your opponents. Some light-up trainers for no reason. <laughs> Mr. Bond, I have one question for you. Does this testicle look swollen? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Bond, welcome back. Uh, how was Russia? How do you feel? Do you know what? Rested. <laughs> Mr. Bond, we just want to check that you understand how to use the new equipment. You know you can swipe left, don't you? <laughs> Blow felt? No, I've never even met felt. <laughs> <laughs> this is the easiest fight on top of a train I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you, Southern Rail. <laughs> Oh, whoa, whoa, I've got a girlfriend. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely small ads. Hello, my name's Ads. <laughs> <laughs> For sale, one tent. Please contact the BBC. <laughs> Genuine single man looking for a relationship. Call this number. If my wife answers, hang up. <laughs> Free to good home. Fucking printer. <laughs> Phone to hear my talk about how I became obese. 888-8888. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbish collection services. Yep, we are genuinely shit at it. <laughs> I saw you on the tube. You were wearing the pink sweater with your hair pulled back. I had my cock and balls out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a hard-working plumber for a reasonable rate? Then you shouldn't have voted for Brexit. <laughs> Learn English on Owner Home. Good examplings, quick books, disbelievable price. <laughs> you buy? <laughs> Applications are now open for the Donald Trump School of Talking to Women because those bitches are not going to interrupt themselves. <laughs> Wanted the internet, as I seem to be the only person in the whole bloody world still using the small ads. <laughs> Have you lost a ginger cat? Check the top of Donald Trump's head. <laughs> Phone to hear my talk about my reaction to eating a South African bishop. Oh, 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 822. <laughs> Respectable middle-aged lady would like to meet gentlemen for cosy nights in. Country walks, theatre visits, and occasional eye popping anal. <laughs> okay. The next topic is things you wouldn't hear on a TV cookery show. Hi, I'm Nigella Lawson, and before I bake any cake, I like to chop my flour into lines. <laughs> See, that's rising nicely. It does that every time I think about how much money Channel 4 are going to pay me. <laughs> uh, 
Hello and welcome to Can't Cook, Won't Cook. Today we won't be making anything. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Coming up next on Saturday Kitchen, whatever we want, because we know you're too hungover to change the channel. <laughs> this is a hot pot. This is a fucking hot pot! <laughs> so, if you want to bone a chicken, what you need to do, take it on a couple of dates and then... <laughs> Invite it back, put on some romantic music and let nature take its course. <laughs> there, is, uh, there is a bit of a problem on this week's food and drink. I've, I've finished all of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, Thai chicken curry, or as I like to call it, hot Asian cock. <laughs> OK, Sam, let's see what you've brought in your bag of ingredients. It is a pint of wine and a large Malteser. <laughs> <laughs> right, welcome to Southern Cooking for Northerners. First up, quinoa. What is it and why it can fuck off? <laughs> Well, if you're going to pop it in, don't forget to cover it first. I didn't, and that's why I'm making paternity payments. <laughs> Hello, I'm Greg Wallace, and this series of MasterChef, we won't be using plates. We'll just be eating off my shiny, shiny head. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, it's Nigella Lawson here again. I'm just going to say the word spatchcock for no reason. <laughs> Spatchcock. <laughs> Anyone can make this. You can't, Beatrice. Sorry, you can't beat rice. Let's just all go home. Yeah, let's just go home. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Great Indian Bake Off. I'm Paul Bollywood. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jamie Oliver. Welcome to my new show, Stick a Bit of Fucking Sugar in It. <laughs> <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear on Crime Watch. <laughs> if you have any information about this crime or any other crime, then keep your mouth shut, stitches, get stitches. Bra -bra -bra. <laughs> A relative paid tribute to the victim who sadly died in the blaze. He said, he was the kind of guy that just lights up a room. <laughs> Studies have discovered that the majority of murderers are men. So what should we be doing? Should, how can we support female murderers? Should we be subsidising childcare? <laughs> <laughs> The suspect defecated on Boris Johnson's doorstep. Witnesses described the man as an absolute legend. <laughs> no crime watch tonight, but reruns of Top of the Pops 2 are on BBC4 now, so just... <laughs> the man broke into Battersea Dogs' home and released all the dogs. Police are desperately searching for leads. <laughs> The criminals then blew the safe, but however hard they blew, it just stayed where it was. <laughs> oh, no! A city up north has gone missing. It begins with L and is great. Police are desperately looking for leads. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like it? It's a Rolex on knick-knack. <laughs> That is a crime watch. <laughs> and now, as a bit of fun, we go to the blooper reel. Give me all your honey. I mean, money. <laughs> <laughs> According to police, there were wet footprints leading across the bedroom carpet. Because one of us doesn't know what a bath mat is. <laughs> The 
The murderer said she did it because he made so many jokes about me on Mock the Week, I couldn't hack it anymore. <laughs> Were you in the Weatherspoons at 9am? If you were, we want you to contact us. There was no crime, we just want to work out what went wrong in your life. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a quick look at Britain's most unwanted. This is Sam Allardyce. <laughs> <laughs> the victim's name was Jehovah. Police are looking for witnesses. <laughs> You know, like greeting cards are about four quid, aren't they? But if you put them in the self service, there's no weight on them. So, don't... hello, welcome to Crime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next topic is unlikely lines from a fantasy film. <laughs> but the ring was lost. Frodo looked up. This rectal exam had gone badly wrong. <laughs> uh. I was. Gandalf the Grey. But now, after only three washes... <laughs> <laughs> Will the Mad Lord defeat the Leper Queen? Rob Beckett, Fox News, Washington. <laughs> <laughs> my magic powers are strong. Put any penis in my hand and watch it grow. <laughs> <laughs> Your Majesty, I have ridden here for two weeks on horseback to deliver this important message from your brother. <laughs> <laughs> Hufflepuff? Oh, great, I'm getting bullied. <laughs> Frodo, it's so far, can't we just split a cab fare? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, darling. No, that's a ticket. Now, this is a double yellow brick road. <laughs> I am Thor. John Thor. <laughs> and I am a Morse god. <laughs> <laughs> Tis I, Merlin, Grand Wizard and supplier of Premier League sticker albums. <laughs> Shazam! A shiny! <laughs> Oh, no! I've been bitten by some radioactive cordroy. That means I'm going to become James Acaster, man! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Alice. This is Sunderland. <laughs> <laughs> After travelling across the dark seas and desolate plains, finally I am home! my keys at Clive's. <laughs> uh, we actually find the term unicorn quite offensive. We prefer skinny rhinoceri. <laughs> <laughs> Call yourself an orc? Oh, yeah, you can talk the orc, but can you walk the orc? <laughs> It's an absolute bloodbath. It's literally a lion in a wardrobe. I cannot <laughs> emphasize that enough. Kill the witch. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, what's that? The film's gone on for nine hours and they don't know what you're doing anymore, so you just get an army of the undead to save the day. Fucking turn it in. <laughs> Commercials that never made it to air. Mr. Muscle loves the jobs you hate, apart from blowjobs. <laughs> he doesn't do blowjobs. <laughs> I used to wash with Dove, but the feathers came off and the beak was scratching. <laughs> Pepper Army, it's a bit of an animal. I'm guessing the anus. <laughs> Four hoof marks and a large pile of poo. That's the sign of the black horse. <laughs> Megabus, the only bus company endorsed by Dara O'Brien. <laughs> Links for when you want to smell like a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Are your pets so wonderful that they're actually tiring you out? Have a break. Have a shit cat. <laughs> Uh, 
Tesco penis extensions. <laughs> because every little helps. <laughs> At Debenhams, we've kidnapped the John Lewis penguin. <laughs> and if you don't shop with us, we'll kill him. <laughs> Egg, collects foot shavings like a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Abby has strong teeth, boundless energy, and a shiny coat. She's the best prostitute in London. <laughs> Barocca, start the day the right way with luminous piss. <laughs> There's now a free gift at the bottom of every box of Frosties. Type 2 diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Tom's rice. Like Uncle Ben's, but a bit more racist. <laughs> <laughs> Crack-flavoured Pringles. Once you pop, you really can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault? Bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear in hospital. Welcome to the Jeremy Hunt wing. <laughs> <laughs> of course the influence of private companies hasn't affected the NHS. Just ask my colleague, Dr Pepper. <laughs> Your cancer specialist today is Noel Edmonds. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Mr Thomas, you won't be on that trolley in the corridor for much longer. We're taking it back to Tesco to get our pound back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid we're going to have to pull the plug because it's wedged really high up there. <laughs> He's gone into cardiac arrest. Get the defibrillator. The defibrillator. <laughs> the defibrillator. Oh, it's too late. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I spoke to the person from NHS 111 and they were just really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is your father is comfortable. In fact, I've been sitting on him all morning. <laughs> yeah. OK, let's call the time of death at 4.15. He's not dead yet, but it's a Friday, and if we leave now, we can beat the traffic. <laughs> For goodness sake, Mr Wallace, please take your penis out of there. That's not what organ donor means. <laughs> <laughs> this is the discussion group for people who've broken bones. Welcome to Snapchat. <laughs> Now, we're going to need to put you to sleep, so I've got two tickets to see Dara O'Brien live in Belgium. <laughs> Is this admissions? Good, cos I got one. I shagged your wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the good news is we're ready to take you into theatre. The bad news is it's a theatre in Brussels. <laughs> OK, we need to shock him. Stick your finger up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> We've given your wife gas and air. And by that, I mean I farted and the nurse opened a window. <laughs> <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear on a kid's TV show. <laughs> Thunderbirds are go! Is what I shout at orgasm. <laughs> No, Lala, I'm afraid you're not Teletubby, you're telly obese, and if you're not careful, you'll get Teletiabetes. <laughs> Don't ask your parents' permission before you phone. Those dicks will only say no. <laughs> <laughs> and on today's Horrible Histories, a 1970s episode of Top of the Pops. <laughs> <laughs> right, young Womble, today we're going to destroy the Wimbledon Tennis Championships and get rid of all this dog poo from the common. Get yourself a golf club. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're not having an affair, whose square pants are these? <laughs> 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 
Well, things are hotting up in Balamori. Archie's been radicalised. <laughs> Well, Miss Hooley, I'm wondering if I'm going to be regretting this job in 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Tumble, you're 43. Grab for fuck's sake. <laughs> Johnny's dad said, do Eurovision. So Johnny left school and entered the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> Daddy Bear said, somebody's been sleeping in my bed. And Mummy Bear said, it was probably your whore, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, three more blobs of glue, and that's a massive cock and balls there. <laughs> <laughs> and the janitor would have got away with it too if it hadn't been for the photographs he'd taken of those pesky kids. <laughs> Yodel delivery driver Pat. Yodel delivery driver Pat. <laughs> He's thrown your parcel in a hedge. <laughs> and now it's time for our resident band of children violinists. Please welcome the Kitty Fiddlers. <laughs> And now, Peppa Pig is a recipe on Saturday Kitchen. <laughs> Let's see what's happening over at the Magic Roundabout. Yep, more dogging. <laughs> and just remember, your Blue Peter badge can get you in free at over 200 strip clubs and lap dancing establishments. <laughs> Kiggle Piggle, it's the Ninky Nonk. Oh, the Nink. Uh, <laughs> Olivier said my Hamlet made him weep like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next topic is on Lighting the Here at Euro 2016. Wayne Rooney's come out covered in Formica. I think the managers told them to play as a unit. <laughs> Rooney is playing in the pocket. Oh, that's unpleasant. <laughs> and England go through on penalties. <laughs> And the French mascot is seven-year-old Lucien Dubois from Nice, showing us all how to smoke a cigarette with real panache there. <laughs> oh, that is an absolutely shocking decision by the referee. Black shorts, black shirt. I'm sure the girls will agree with me. Way too matchy-matchy. <laughs> Let's not forget that Roy Keane and Martin Skirtle were club mates at Real Sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is an absolute beauty. Swedish, about 25. Well done, Dirty Dave, on camera five. <laughs> <laughs> the England front three are trying to get in behind, but the wags are having none of it. <laughs> and the French officials have surrendered. <laughs> oh, did that cross the line? Seemed a bit racist to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, next for us, it's Iceland, Turkey. And when that's defrosted, it's England, Slovakia. <laughs> And Russia have gone for a 4 3 3 7 8 10 1 9 16 formation. We're never going to get out of this alley. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look at the stats in the first half. I was responsible for 90% of the cliches. And that really is the icing on the cake. <laughs> He really should have worn tighter shorts. <laughs> so who's up for the World Cup in Russia? 
Guys? <laughs> Guys? <laughs> There goes Ronaldo down the wing and doing what he did a minute ago, and he's slightly slower. This is the replays now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Goal! Well, they say, cometh the hour, cometh the man, and I have. I'm just off to get some more pants. <laughs> Unlikely film trailers. <laughs> Referendum two. We'll keep doing it until we get the result we like. <laughs> From the director of Batman vs Superman, a heartfelt letter of apology for wasting our time. <laughs> <laughs> Tantric Sex, the movie, not coming soon. <laughs> the new all-female Ghostbusters. The CGI looks amazing because we saved 30% on actors' wages. <laughs> Sepp Blatter and Donald Trump star in Despicable. Me too. <laughs> Thanks to an unfortunate typo, it's the most one-sided action film ever. Alan versus Predator. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you thought the service couldn't be any more appalling, Southern Rail present Snakes on a Train. <laughs> the Avengers go to prison. They should have asked the age of Ultron. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest trick the devil ever played was charging nine quid for Fanta and popcorn. <laughs> it's a fucking lot, isn't it? <laughs> In his most important role to date, Danny Dyer is Emmeline Pankhurst. <laughs> Look at the rest of these tarts, he's pissed off! <laughs> the sequel you hoped they would never make The Martian 2. 101 Dull Martians. <laughs> One man stands alone. It's Labour, the film. <laughs> it's the autoerotic asphyxiation thriller, Die Hard. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, the heartwarming story of a vajazzler in an old folks home. <laughs> In a land where nothing costs more than a pound. It's pound land. <laughs> <laughs> Referendum four. Now Ant wants to leave deck. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Gove is David Cameron's best buddy in Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Mate. <laughs> Harrison Ford is 73, and he's back in Indiana Jones and the Tricky Patch of Ice outside the post office. <laughs> in a world where they only sell PCs. It's PC world. <laughs> Very good. OK, next topic. On likely things to hear on a makeover show. Look, Gokwan, I know you're trying to build my confidence up, but you can stop grabbing my tits and shouting bangers. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Changing Rooms. This one's in the laundry department at Debenhams. <laughs> I love what you've done with the bedroom, guys. I love the neutral colours. I love everything, all the new furniture. But what have you done with my bean bag? There was 20 grand's worth of coke in that. <laughs> Well, why do we call it DIY SOS? Because I have accidentally staple gunned my penis to this staircase. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Straight Eye for the Straight Guy, where the advice is always spray links on your crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Patterson says her downstairs is a little damp. Don't worry, Alan Titchmarsh has that effect on a lot of women, you're <laughs> 
<laughs> when Susan approached us, she was overweight, she had terrible hair, and her self-esteem was at rock bottom. But now, thanks to our team, she's got a new kitchen. <laughs> This bathroom really is looking exquisite now. We have laid Moroccan tiles on the floor. We've used accentuating tones on the walls. And over here, we've put a brand new shitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's taken a lot of work, a lot of sawing and a lot of drilling. But finally, the shed is finished. And Jeff has somewhere quiet to masturbate in. <laughs> Oh, wow, she looked hideous before, didn't she? Oh, that's after, sorry. <laughs> oh, we just did a spruce up, really. You know, we dusted, got rid of the cobweb, sorted out the curtains downstairs, and, uh, yeah, I'll probably shag her now. <laughs> well, I mean, I absolutely love it. I love the wallpaper, I love the way you've knocked through. It's just one thing. I actually live next door. <laughs> I showed this couple from Sussex a delightful little semi earlier and said, if they touch it, I'll do it at their house. <laughs> what your hair needs is volume and lots of body. So here's Brian Blessed. <laughs> Why did you give me your teeth? <laughs> Unlikely things for a sports commentator to say. <laughs> and there you have it. Andy Murray has won his second Wimbledon. Thank you for watching. I'm Tim Henman. This is the worst day of my life. <laughs>well, he's really got on the end of that. He has hit that ball a long way, long, long, long way back into the crowd. That is, that is dreadful snooker. <laughs> <laughs> Rooney, Tavardi. Back to Rooney. Tavardi. No, neither of them can open that packet of sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> and the results for the Russian doping test have come out. I must say, those are some good drugs. Lovely to see Quidditch finally in the Olympics. Look at all the proud, proud virgins. <laughs> Eugenie Bouchard hits the backhand. That is a fantastic shot. Well done, the cameraman. Low angle, perfect view of her knickers. <laughs> So you join us here for the opening ceremony of Rio 2016 and the stadium is rocking, mainly because they haven't finished building it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this Grand Prix has been cancelled but I've managed to catch a wasp under this paper cup. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bullseye, and you know what that means? I won't be buying a pie from Greg's again. <laughs> McElroy takes out the driver. Uber aren't going to be happy about that. <laughs> Look at all these athletes in peak physical condition. If I could see just one of them naked, I would die happy. <laughs> Rejected exam questions. <laughs> if Maria from Russia combines ephedrine with oxycotin, will she win her next tennis match? <laughs> <laughs> Was Elizabeth the first? No? Then who did you lose your virginity to? <laughs> if I have two balls in this hand and two balls in this hand, how am I going to explain this to the Board of Governors? <laughs> What is the role Adolf Hitler and the Nazis played in keeping the History Channel on the air? <laughs> if it takes John's girlfriend 14 minutes to walk to the train station, then why are we still getting ready? <laughs>
which of the following is a quote by Winston Churchill? A, we will fight them on the beaches. B, God damn, I love these peaches. C... <laughs> <laughs> If you buy four apples for ten pounds, stop shopping at Waitrose. <laughs> if the borrowers never returned anything they borrowed, why were they called the borrowers and not the thieving little bastards? <laughs> History. Who were the Liberal Democrats? <laughs> Kinesis exam. You may now turn your page over with your mind. <laughs> <laughs> British citizenship test. Question one. Who is the leader of the Conservative Party? <laughs> and now? <laughs> How about now? <laughs> if a man can make £400,000 a year as an estate agent, why is he wasting his life setting exam questions while locked in a loveless marriage? <laughs> in less than 200 words, please describe your plan for Brexit. Please, anything will do. Literally anything. <laughs> Which of the following is a quote by Winston Churchill? A. We will fight them on the beaches. B. Goddamn, I love these peaches. So I can't do that. It would make me laugh so much. I love Goddamn, I love these peaches so much. <laughs> Predict the next number in this sequence. 1966. <laughs> uh, question 1066. When was the Battle of Hastings? <laughs> Biology. Take the dead rat and dissect it, remove its head, and nail it to the canteen door as a warning to other rats. <laughs> <laughs> Which is bigger, 52% or 48%? <laughs> That's democracy. Get on with it. <laughs> Which of the Following is a famous fuck engine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear on a train. The next station will be Wimbledon Change here for Overground, Underground, and Wombling Free. <laughs> the next stop for this train will be Waterloo. It's not meant to be, but the brakes have failed. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to tell you, I'm on the train. No, just everyone else is doing it. Thought I'd join in. <laughs> Hello, this is your driver speaking. Choo choo! <laughs> now, an announcement for the people who insist on sitting the way the train is moving, because sitting backwards feels weird. You're weird. <laughs> This train will shortly be arriving in Taunton. Please remember to turn off all mobile phones, lest they mistake you for gods. <laughs> <laughs> this is an announcement for all passengers. Piss off a lot of you. <laughs> this is cross rail. <laughs> Due to Britain leaving the EU, this train will no longer stop at Ashby de la Zouch. <laughs> <laughs> Bing bong! Could the owner of a missing xylophone please make their way to the guard's <laughs> carriage? This is an announcement for the passengers who are complaining that this service is late. Can I just point out that as this is Southern Rail, you're lucky to be on a fucking train at all. <laughs> Bing bong. This is the bullet train service to Tokyo. Oh, we're here. Everyone off. <laughs> Would the driver please contact the guard? We're doing 120. You don't seem to be in the cab, mate. <laughs> <laughs> P 
please mind the gap between the timetable and reality. <laughs> There is a quiet carriage on this train for those shocked into silence by the price of the ticket. <laughs> oh, don't get off here. I was listening to that. <laughs> ah, 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 oh, 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 my God! Oh, my God! Bob, scatter tunnels. I'm so scared of tunnels. <laughs> The point is Ed, you and James! <laughs> <laughs>